Did Sock actually say that? Did Bakayo? Did, wait, 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 wait. Did, did Bakayo Sock actually say that? Even he said he should have stayed on his feet and tapped it in. Dude, that, uh, I, I didn't, if he actually said that, I didn't see that. Mike, thank you so much for the 14 months. What's up, chat? Good to see you. Myers Racing, thank you for the 26 months. Horatio, thank you for the nine months. Rabbies, you thank you so much for the 30 freaking months. Our child's getting pretty big. Yeah, I should probably start paying alimony. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Schmieber, thank you so much for the 11 months. What do you call fake spaghetti? An imposter. Nah, bro said a fan said it. Okay, yeah. Oh, I also said it. I think Bakayo Saka should have stayed on his feet and tapped the ball in, dude. I think Bakayo Saka should have stayed on his feet and tapped the ball in. How does he not stay on his feet and tap the ball in? That blew my mind. Because I, but you know what also blew my mind? I kind of agree with like, I saw a lot of discourse online, right? Is Kabarsi the next Beckenbauer? He's the youngest defender to ever start, like, and win a Champions League quarterfinal. So that's something. Franz Beckenbauer never did that. It's 17 years and 89 days. Right. Hope you guys had a good Wednesday. Hope you had a good Champions League two days because it was freaking awesome. But the <laughs> you didn't know that Kabarsi fact, did you? That's why I had Kabarsi there. That I am so frustrated at Barcelona because their ability to produce Wonder Kids is incredible, and yet they insist on spending money, like getting themselves in financial trouble by spending a ton of money on players anyways. They spawn in superstars. They just they just spawn them in. They've got so it's like a glitch in the it's like a glitch in a video game. They just keep spawning in superstars. You don't even know what's going on. I'm enjoying the fact that the EFL championship relegation battle is insane. Well, I would imagine if you're a fan of one of those teams, you're not enjoying it because I've heard the championships wild this year. I mean, I know we've got there's like three teams that are trying to get up to the Premier League in the automatic spots, and they're like all trying to bottle it at the same time. How do I think Arsenal v. Bayern will end out? I think Bayern's going to win, dude. I mean, I, I, I thought Bayern was going to win the match in London, but they've got nothing else to play for. They're out of the co uh, DFB poke all. They're out of the league. This is it. They're going to rest and rotate and do whatever they need to do, right? And uh, they're going to give every ounce of effort that they can to try and win in this, you know, Champions League tie. This is what they've got. They're using a cheat code for Wonder Kids. Dude, I, like, yeah, they've got the editor on for sure. Barcelona has the editor on. I, like the, the kids that they've got that are just like, uh, literally the kids they've got that are just spawning in. They, they've got, <laughs> they have the editor on. They have the editor on suspiciously. I didn't see Bayern playing that well. Uh, they, yeah, they looked really good. Yeah, look, I, I think Bayern, Bayern has not been a question of if they're talented enough. Bayern's talented enough to beat anybody. It was a question of cohesion and playing together and belief. And they've been down on themselves in the league all year. But if you're in the Champions League quarterfinal, that's almost like a relief. It's like, oh, finally, we're not playing in the league where everything's all sad and depressing. You know, we're, we're coming out to play in a competition where, like, we, uh, you know, we're, we're back in it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, would, I'm, I'm, I, I would not surprise that Bayern uh, played well. I was impressed by Arsenal because Arsenal stood up and delivered. Right, Arsenal, they scored early. They responded in the second. Like, Arsenal stood up and delivered. And they were, this is a different Arsenal than even last year. This is an Arsenal that is comfortable in the biggest moments. And that, I mean, that's cool for this generation of players and everything. Barca's alive after four years. Yeah, Barcelona's like playing for its livelihood here. Like, hey, if we win the Champions League, we'll get enough money, you know. Finding out OJ died by reading the comment section of a Zealand stream is not on my bingo card. Yeah, OJ Simpson died today. Uh, that, that basically all of the thoughts that I have on the matter. If Byron gets that handball, I've made 285 euros. That's why I don't bet. <laughs> this is why I don't bet. No, you want to know the real reason I don't bet? I'll tell you what. I would bet if it was a public service company, but the fact that those companies make so much freaking money that they advertise as much as they do? Where the hell do you think that money's coming from? You know? <laughs> People that are betting. Sus.
it's sus. Honestly, I could never get into betting because I'm just like, bro, they're making so much money. If they if, if betting was actually a good idea, that company would not be rich, right? If it was just like a public service that giving you a legit 50-50, like, yo. Yeah. Betting companies bring so many young people to like, yeah, of course they do. Why do you think they advertise so much? You know. They're not they're not they're not over here like um I'm trying to think of a good example. Who doesn't advertise a lot, but it's like pretty ubiquitous? Like, I don't know. I spent a lot of time in England. I don't know if I don't know if I've ever seen like a Greg's commercial. I've never seen like a 7 Eleven commercial in the United States, but they're freaking everywhere. You know what I mean? Betting is pushed way too much by sports YouTubers because they pay a ton of money, dude. I don't blame sports YouTubers for taking that, right? Because, you know, like sports YouTubers are also not the ones placing the bets, you know? Like, personally, I don't do that. But, like, you're all, like if you take an ad from a, from a betting company, that doesn't make you a bad person, you know? I, I Like, we, we got to make sure that we're pushing the blame into the right direction here. Yeah, you're not really, you're like, placing the, like, they're not placing the bets for you. Yeah, but but no, I, look, it was always very simple in my brain. I never got into gambling because I was like, those companies are making a lot of money, which means that it's probably a bad idea. That means at least the majority are losing a boatload of cash on this. James, thank you so much for the three months, brother. I appreciate you supporting the stream. King, thank you for the 18 months. That's why we gamble channel points, man. That's why we gamble channel points. That's where that's where it's at. Hey, Zealand and Stream, what's up, Jimmy? If you ever want to know the song name, you just hit exclamation point song as well. I that that is connected to my Spotify. What team is this? Spurs? Yes. We are managing Spurs. We got a transfer window here as well. It's gonna be absolutely spicy. Speaking of gambling channel points, I'd like to go all or nothing on next goal scorer. There you go. Remember to bet, yes, remember to bet your bacon responsibly, right? You want to make me dab, uh, but you want to do it responsibly. What's happened in previous streams? Because I'm new to your Twitch channel. Uh, tomfoolery, generally. Uh, but we've also been playing a save since, you know, like the you know, the end of November, where we started with no badges or playing experience as a manager, and we've made it all the way up to Tottenham Hotspur. The Spurs save is showing in your latest YouTube vid. Yeah. That is behind the live channel, though. So as long as you're caught up on the live channel, then you know. But that is true. I do use my, like, current Twitch save to, to kind of show around. So yeah, imagine if you were behind on the live channel, that might there might be, like, a sneaky spoiler in there. But that wasn't obviously the, uh, the point. That was the Dortmund game. I was actually doing something during the Champions League yesterday. So I watched the Champions League on Tuesday. I did not sit down and watch both matches on Wednesday. But they were also good. PSG Barcelona, I heard, was also good. Kylian Mbappe didn't do anything. That was the first that, like, all I needed to do was open one social media, and I found out Kylian Mbappe didn't do freaking anything. <laughs> and then I, like, I also... Do you remember the... I don't know if you guys saw this. The, 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 the like, broadcaster for, like, Spanish TV. I think it's um, Movie Star Plus. They got boycotted in the interview. Did you guys see that? They had, uh, they had a, um, like, the interviews after the game, and both PSG and Barcelona boycotted Movie Star Plus. Very good match. Very good Lewandowski match. I mean, Lewandowski was perpetually disrespected, really, his entire career. I've always like, no, I know, I know what it was for. I know what it was for. It was for a racist comment by, by um, what's his name? Mano Bor Borgos. Mano Borgos. And then he like, they like kicked him off Movie Star Plus immediately. I'm going to be honest, though. If you're playing in uh, Spain, Italy, whatever, you're probably hearing something worse than that on the field every single game. But, yeah, they boycott. They boycotted Movie Star Plus. That's like the Spanish broadcaster. Which was kind of it was like an off-the-cuff comment. Let me... <laughs> I was looking it up before I, uh, before I got on today. It, what, it was... He said... Um, Basically, Lamine Yamal was like juggling the ball in the field. And also, Lamine Yamal, he, that's a kid. 
We're talking about a child. An actual child here, right? And this guy, Mono Borgos, goes, like, like if he, he was juggling on the field, and it, it, that, that wasn't the exact quote. What was the exact quote? Like, if, if basically, if Lamine Yamal flops, he will end up at a traffic light. Like, basically, the idea being he'll end up, like, juggling the ball at a traffic light for money, I think. Yeah. Which, I... Isn't, isn't Borgos Simeone's old assistant? I have no idea who Mono Borgos is. I, I don't mean, like, disrespect onto the guy, but I, I legitimately had no idea who he was until this. And somebody was like, Yo, did you see that they boycotted Movie Star? And I was like, yeah. My, my thing is, obviously, you need, like, a little extra context about Spanish society to understand why this is, like, a racial or social insult. But it's just such a weird thing that, like... Of every single player in the world, I would say Lamine Yamal is probably the least likely under 19 player to flop. Also, like, why are you looking at Lamine Yamal dribbling before a match and doing anything other than going, wow, what a star boy? You know, wow, that dude is really good. Is it racist or classist? I don't know. I've got, I, I like, I, I don't know. That's why I said I feel like you need more context on Spanish society. What I can tell you is that very quickly everybody was like, You know, like, everybody kind of quickly made that face, and they were like, ah, <laughs> like, ah, dude, what the, f like, why? <laughs> and the guy just noped out immediately. And I think it's also telling when instead of just, like, the Twitter mob, it's, like, both teams. He's one of the best goalkeepers from River Plate and International for Argentina. Thank you, Matt Max, for giving me the lore. I appreciate that. I did not know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the fact that both the teams, when they heard about it, were like, we're not talking to Movistar, that's a pretty good indication that, like, when you translate it into the cultural, social context, it was not a good thing to say. Yeah. Wow. Well. It's racist. He's referring to his other nationalities. To be fair, Lamine Yamal does have about 27 nationalities. That dude is the United Nations. But he was also born and raised in Spain. So, I, you know, I, but look. This, I... I <laughs> I defer to the people that would know, and the people that would know made that face. They just went, ah, you know, let's not, yeah. And then they, uh, movie star basically fired him and he resigned all, all at the same time. So that was that. That was that weird piece of drama around the Champions League with Mono Borgos. Uh, did you see the payout Kevin Augustine got from Leeds? He got 28 million euros because Leeds didn't honor his mandatory buying clause after they loaned him from Leipzig. Also, they had to pay Leipzig 18 million in compensation. Where is Leeds getting that money from? Parachute payments, I guess. How much was the mandatory purchase? How do you blow through a mandatory purchase? I wish, can I do that in football manager? Can I just be like, nah, ugh. can you imagine if that happened to you though? Like if you were RB Leipzig and you're like in football manager, you have a mandatory purchase and then they just don't buy him and he just comes back. That thing was years ago. I don't know. Jellic just mentioned it right now. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> I'm like, ah, okay. I'm out, dude. I don't have to pay anybody anymore. Thank you, Olaf, for the 38 months. Why are skeletons so calm? Nothing gets under their skin. That's solid effort right there, dude. That's a B. I'm going to grade. You know, we always grade those dad jokes A to F. I'm going to grade that one a B. That's a really solid effort. No, I, I, I'm so happy, chat, that the Champions League is back, though. Absolutely fantastic that the Champions League is back in business. Uh, I, like, we, we've got some absolutely sumptuous ties. I uh, can't wait for David Moyes to end Bayern, La uh, Bayer Leverkusen's unbeaten season tonight. That's going to be funny. Hope you're feeling better. I am. I am feeling better. I'm feeling at the top of my game. I appreciate that. I, I, but yes, I have, I have fully recovered. It has been a week since I was down and out with food poisoning. So is it sinful to watch this while playing EAFC 20? Oh, no, no. I, I enjoy playing EAFC every once in a while. 
right? You're looking at somebody that is the EAFC launch tournament champion. I've got game. You know, I've been, I've been known, I've been known to get on the sticks a little bit. I've been known to lay it down, right? You're looking at somebody that drew like a former professional uh, FIFA player right here. I've got some game. I'm like that old man at the YMCA. You know, I've got some, I've got some, I've got some game. It's still hanging around. Knowing you're a history buff, do you have a channel just talking history? No, I'm not that much of a history buff. When you have a channel just like there are like, I might be a big time history buff. You got to be an even bigger history buff to be talking about history on the internet, right? I guess that's literally what I'm doing when we sit here on the stream and talk about history, but <laughs> Europa League has beautiful fixtures too. Honestly, even the Conference League has beautiful fixtures. There's just so many beautiful fixtures out there. I mean, what are the ties? Like, what? Are, I know we've got the two Greek teams. We've got Olympiakos Fenerbahce. Like, I mean, and Fenerbahce is actually going to play because that's not in the Turkish League, so that's sick. Villa Lille, solid. Brugge and Pauk Thessaloniki for a spot in a European semifinal. How could you not love the game? Pilsen and Fiorentina is not a good tie. Fiorentina is going to win that pretty darn easily. But the Europa League, Aroma Milan. I love West Ham against Bayer Leverkusen because if West Ham wins that tie, the Bundesliga is never beating the allegations. Benfica Marseille is just a classic old head European Titan matchup. Liverpool and Atalanta. Atalanta's just good enough to give Liverpool problems. They've got good European talent and experience on that team overlooked team very frequently champions league knockout contender type side think cole palmer is the best midfielder in england are you high are you all right you want to talk to somebody about it <laughs> do i think cole palmer is the best midfielder in england no um does anyone Molly Boom, thank you for the nine months. Sounds like bait. Yeah. Imagine Liverpool versus Bayer Leverkusen. That would be electric. That would be so fun. How do I try and get a massive job at an FM journeyman save? I have a four-star reputation. You're close, dude. Uh, the problem is if your adaptability is really low, uh, then you're not going to be able to get a job at another country that's like equivalent to anything that you're currently at. So let, let's say you want to be the coach of Real Madrid. We'll go coach a mid-table team in La Liga, and then you build up your reputation in that country and prove you can manage in that country. That's how you overcome big adaptability issues in a journeyman. Um, you also, you know, winning stuff never hurts. You just continue to, like, win stuff. Thinking he's one of the best is crazy. He is the best. Okay, so the best English midfielder is Jude Bellingham. Uh, that, that's the best English midfielder. Then Jordan Henderson, then Calvin Phillips. Uh, Calvin Phillips. That's that's. By the way, uh, Gareth Southgate. Nice, nice to meet you. Absolute pleasure. Um, really excited for the Euros. Cannot wait. Yeah, no, I. That's. <laughs> yeah, dude. Can't wait till uh, we get to wheel out Bellingham, Phillips, and Henderson in the middle. It's going to be amazing. Where would I rank Kobe Minu? I don't think anybody in their right mind could rank Kobe Minu appropriate late right now. That dude's ass is strapped to a rocket. Okay. He is flying right now, and we will see where that rocket tapers off and where he kind of chills for a little while. What about Brown Hill? Oh, yeah, he's got the right stuff, you know? Just got a, a you know, face and a name you can trust. You know, there's just something about him. Something about him, you know? Who do you think are your favorite? Who are your favorites for you? I mean, who are you guys' favorites for the Euros? To be perfectly honest. No, no, okay. Look, if I'm building my actual England midfield, it's Jude Bellingham, Phil Foden, Declan Rice as the screener. That's who I'm putting in there. And then I'm going Bakayo Saka, Jack Grealish, Harry Kane. Give me the sauce. Give me the sauce. Malta? Yeah, okay. Germany? Why are you saying Germany, man? Why? You can't. You can say Germany might be better, but there's no way you can say Germany is like the guy. Look, I you, you'd say Grealish with the dead face all you want. That dude's one of the best like wingers in the world. He's not at the top level, but he's on that second level, right? He's not Mbappe. He's not Vinicius. 
but he's on that second level. He is a really, really good winger, especially the way Gareth Southgate likes to play. I just don't. I just don't get how you could like hate on Grealish when Pep Guardiola, widely acknowledged as like the greatest football mind of the age, loves that guy. <laughs> Absolutely loves that guy's ability to annoy players, draw fouls. His interplay, dude, in that match with Real Madrid, he was constructing some really pretty attacks off that left side. Why no Palmer? I think he's on the team. I just said, like, where do you start him in the team that I just named? I don't think he starts over any of those guys. Yeah, Germany won both friendlies. They're at home and they're good. Well, look, Germany's at home and they're good. I'm just saying saying Germany is the favorite after the way they've performed is like a kind of crazy move. Saying Germany is the favorite for the Euros after the way that that national team's performed the last couple big tournaments is, is crazy. They could win it. You could be proven right, you know, but I, I, I think if I'm going in, the favorite's France. Uh, and then after France, I'm going to go England. Uh, after England, I'm going to go Spain. Uh, probably Portugal and Germany after that. And then you got the Netherlands kind of in that group too. You know what I mean? Portugal in front of Spain for me. I could see that, Mike. Uh, uh, Lobano, I was, I was thinking about that for sure. I was debating that. I put Italy below that. I put Italy below that. I got to see what this new generation's got, right? We didn't get to see them at the World Cup because they didn't freaking make it for the second straight time, bro. They didn't make it for the second straight time. Chiellini's, like, not there anymore, right? God, what was his name? Oh, I can't even remember the other guy. It was Chiellini and... Not Balotelli. My brain's stuck on Balotelli because I'm pretty sure it started with a B and I cannot think... I'm keeping my eyes closed because you guys probably already freaking know who it is. Benucci, thank you. I thought of it all on my own, chat. It was Benucci. Those guys aren't, you know, they're not rocking up anymore. Jorginho is not third in the Ballon d'Or anymore, right? I think Italy's got a new generation. They're going to have to figure out how good those guys are. I think Italy is probably going to get, like, maybe quarterfinal, but yeah. Who's the dark horse? Croatia, always. Do they still count? Is Cro Croatia's always the dark horse. Croatia's made the last four of the last two World Cups, and they're Croatia. If they still count as a dark horse, I'm going to say Croatia. Croatia, the new Belgium, kind of. They kind of better than them, too, because they did make a World Cup final. You say Ukraine? Ah, I, like, that would be a lot of fun, obviously, if it was Ukraine. But the problem is I don't actually think they're quite good enough to do it. I think that Ukraine's going to probably battle their way to the knockouts, and that's going to be the good story. But if we're talking dark horse, we're talking team we think has the ability to win. I don't think Ukraine has the ability to win. Luke, thank you for the two months, brother. Why are skeletons bad at public speaking? They don't have guts. Sad but true. Sad but true. Is Austria good? No. But <laughs> they did make it. And they will, you know, they will be a tough out. I just, there's just no top in. The Austria's going to have the same issue that, like, Sweden has without Zlatan Ibrahimovic, right? Or, like, Sweden, when they made it to the World Cup quarterfinal, like, a little bit before Isak and kind of after Zlatan, where it's like, that team is really tough, really competitive, really together, great tactical idea, guys that are not afraid of the moment, guys that play at a high level, but they don't have any difference makers, not one. Right, and so you're either going to have to get really lucky to be able to actually win those matches or you're just going to end up losing. Which team will flop and why is it Switzerland? That's a lie. Switzerland never flops. Switzerland does the exact same thing every tournament. Them beating France on penalties was just a bit of a plot twist like last time, but Switzerland does the same thing every tournament, man. Same thing. Romania unbeaten in qualifying group with Switzerland and Israel. I mean, let's be honest, though. 
That's not crazy impressive. That is good. That's better than Romania has been. That is an improvement. And that's what gotten them. Th th that's what's gotten them there. Look, I'm not pff, comparing Austria to a team that made it to the World Cup quarterfinals. I'm not saying Austria is bad. I'm just saying that when it gets down to it, and you're up against France, and you're up against England, and you're up against Spain, you you need something to make it work. And they just don't, they don't, they, I look, I coached Austria in football manager. They don't have a lot of inspiring offensive talent. They don't, they, they just don't. Israel's super weak. Their team's better than they used to be. Israel's national team is better than it used to be. They've they, like Manor Solomon and those guys. They're better than they used to, than they used to be. I mean, they were in the playoffs again. Chelsea's definitely got some best, some of the best young players like Malo Gusto. Tommy, you're just, you, you're, I believe you're a Chelsea fan of that. Am I correct? Fenerbahce is going to win it all in the uh, conference league. I mean, they could. That would be a giant middle finger to the Turkish league setup if they did that. You know what I'm saying? Who, you, who do I have between Milan and Roma? AC Milan. I got to ride with my boy Polisic. Got to ride with my boy Polisic. And AC Milan. I mean, we're, that team made the friggin' Champions League semifinal last year. <laughs> Malo Gusto is uh, the funniest name ever. Mal means like bad or angry in Spanish too. So I uh, that's for some reason that's how I I always think of like like Mad Gusto is kind of like what I think of when I hear his name. You know because I'm so Spanish. Muy mal Gusto. Okay, good. I'm not the only person that thinks that. Yeah. Okay, Cro Croatian Malo Gusto means little dense. Nice. It translates to bad taste. Hey, my brain wasn't all wrong. How about that, dude? Enrique threw shade at Xavi last night, saying he had a bitter, bigger impact to Barca than Xavi. Well, I mean, are, the, are we factoring in Xavi's time as a player? <laughs> because if we're not factoring in Xavi's time as a player, then Luis Enrique might be right. But if we are... Bruh. Bruh. In my opinion, Chelsea's youth academy is slowly going downhill. It's not so good anymore like the last few years. It's impossible to keep a youth academy at a top standard all the time. Even Barcelona had a dip there for a few years where they didn't just, like, spawn in one of the best wonder kids in the world. It's all right. It happens to everybody. Brutal. As a Milan fan, I'm very happy with the Americanos' performances. Hey, turns out some of the Americans aren't that bad. Ha! Huh. Do you think Yusufa Mukoko will ever live up to the hype? He needs playing time. He didn't receive much because of Terzic. I think he's probably completely stagnated. I uh, and and look, that happens. It happens to it happened to Gio Reyna too. I mean, Borussia Dortmund has really you know they, they have such a great reputation for developing these amazing wonder kids but there is a bit of a clog in the drain there like a, there is a bit of a clog most underrated youth academy hmm most underrated youth like a psg they don't use any of them they sell them and then they're good other places that's why nobody talks about it but PSG produces a lot of really talented players and then d just, like, <laughs> doesn't actually use them. And then they sell them for pennies and they're good everywhere else. Max Hack, though, thank you for the 39 <laughs> months. Holy Toledo, Max. That is a long time. Thank you for supporting the channel for over three years, brother. I really appreciate you. It isn't PSG. It's Paris and the region. Yeah, that's fair. But, I mean, PSG obviously has tapped into a lot of that. It's an AZ. I feel like AZ is appropriately recognized. Man City's is really good. People don't talk about that a lot. But, like, you you know, Phil Foden and Cole Palmer are both emerging at the same time. Man, Rico Lewis. Right? Did they, they, did they buy Rico? I think they bought Rico. Here, he's literally on my team. I should be able to just kind of go uh, go look. Where Where are you? Did they buy Rico? No, he's he's their academy too. Okay, yeah. I mean, they, they, Manchester City's academy is pretty dang good. Oscar Bob's another great one. James Sancho, who they did not capitalize on at all. Yeah. 
Do I think Adeyemi will ever be good? I think he is good. I don't think Kareem Adeyemi will ever be brilliant. I don't think he'll ever be like world-class bagging 30 goals in a Bundesliga season. I think he will be very good for a long time. I just don't see that final bit of it factor from Kareem Adeyemi. But that, I mean, the guy could be the starting striker for Dortmund for the next eight years or like play up front or whatever, you know, at one of the wings. Then Liverpool's academy is good. Curtis Jones, Harry, uh, you know, Elliot. Yeah, yeah, it. Ah. <laughs> Do I expect Sheshko to be prominent in the Euros? Yeah. Benjamin Sheshko's a Rolls Royce prospect. That dude will come good unless injuries take him out. That's the only option. Adiyemi is the definition of a simple pace merchant. I think Kareem Adiyemi is like German Sterling. He's like German. He's like German Raheem Sterling. Like that's that's kind of like he's definitely good, right? There's no doubt that he's good. But I I just Sterling is better than Kareem Adeyemi. But that's kind of the vibe that I get. Where there's just always that little piece that's missing that where you can't just look at Sterling and be like, wow, what a world class player. Like without a doubt, without having a big conversation, right? Harvey Elliott was bought off Fulham. Oh, and he was like 16. Then who else is Liverpool's academy? Yeah, there you go. Eight, nine, uh, 3.8 million in 2019. So in 2019, he was, yeah, 16 years old. Okay. Fair enough. Anthony Gordon. He came up at Everton. He moved. Well, Trent. Okay, fair. Trent. You got to have one in your actual team. Hosolu is Spanish, Nicholas Fuelkrug. That is an excellent equivalency. That is bang on. Yes. Oh, Connor Bradley. What was he signed? No, right? Connor Bradley is Liverpool. Uh, well, he was, sorry. He was signed from the Dungannon Swifts. Are we counting the Dungannon Swifts? He was brought in from the Dungan and Swifts in Northern Ireland when he was 16 years old. Always, always count the Dungan and Swifts. Anytime I get the opportunity to count the Dungan and Swifts, I count them. Oh, I have to do something. Oh, no. Good morning, Zealand. What is your main goal for today? Spendeth the money. And conquereth the league, my good sir. All right, we'll come back and see if we can check that off later. My good sir, Jarrell Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa's great. Can somebody teach me how to say Kelleher's first name so I don't embarrass myself? Nah, man, best academy for realsies. ASEC Mimosas. <laughs> Or what's um what's the Malian one? The one in Mali, Generation Foot. Is that it? Those are the real heroes. Just academies. Don't even they're like not even they're barely even teams. Generation Foot is uh Senegal. What's the one in Mali then? What's the there's one in Mali that I'm trying to think of that like every good player in the Malian national team came through. Which is pretty there's there's a good number of them. Not that one? Okay. Why? Well, I, I, look, I, don't, I, I have to... Hold on. I had to do something. Da, 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 da. Okay, there we go. Go it. Right to Dream? Not the right... Not the freaking Right to Dream Academy, man. No, not the Right to Dream Academy. Molly Football Academy. <sighs> Is it Academy JMG? That might that that sounds like it might be it. Okay. All right. Eves. Give me Eves Basuma. Is it would it show up here? Real Bama. Oh, he came through a different one. 
Whatever. I love Molly so much. Nobody cares about Molly. So disrespected. So best acad I mean best academies La Masia. I I don't it's not close. The best academy is La Masia. Any other answer is wrong. Um I I think if we're top academies that need not be ignored. Porto Benfica, uh United, Liverpool, Chelsea. Um Arsenal's obviously done a good job uh particularly recently. Ajax and AZ, uh, Feyenoord do a, <sighs> eh. PSG, even though they don't actually use their own guys, they just kind of sell them to other teams. <laughs> but, you know, they don't, they don't actually use them. They just sell them to other teams. The Red Bull Network, dude, if you could lump that into one, legitimately the Red Bull Network, like Salzburg plus Leipzig, they do a really good job. I know they're fraudulent or whatever. No, no not fraudulent, but just like scummy. But they do a really <laughs> good job. Uh, City, of course. A lot of quality coming out of Real Madrid that never is good for Real. Yeah, Real Madrid's got that going on for itself, too. They've got like... The, the guys come through and then they just sign another superstar and all of the guys that just came through are sitting there like, what the hell, mate? What's all this, said? That 20 eccentricity goalkeeper from River Plate. Latte. RB being a plight on every youth prospect in East Germany. Yeah, I, I mean, they probably, they just vacuum them all up, you know. <laughs> Often I'm academy. Oh, Shakhtar Donetsk. Wait a second. <laughs> Shakhtar Donetsk. Act, like, actually. I mean, the last couple of years have been a little more difficult, but. I think Chelsea needs to hire Jose Mourinho. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I really don't. Um, yeah, but Shakhtar Donetsk developed a lot of really good players, found a lot of kind of small-time guys in, in Latin America and, and really turned them into something. To be fair, RB is the only good team in East Germany. Union Berlin would like a word. Okay. How dare you? Union Berlin exists. There's talk of Mourinho going to Benfica. Nah, I don't think he's ready to go to the Portuguese league yet. I think he's waiting for a major, major team. No offense to Benfica, obviously. But I think he's waiting for a major league team is the way I should word that. Have Red Star developed anybody? No, Dinamo Zagreb is one of those underrated, like a low-key sporting. Obviously developed some great players. Latest being, I believe, Usman Diamande. That dude's coming through. They got him when no, I mean, they got Diamande when nobody cared about him. Would they buy him from like Norway and then two years of sporting and he's worth a hundred million. That'll do it. Philadelphia Union Academy recently. Dude, that's kind of, that's kind of true, dude. The Philadelphia Union Academy is cooking right now. And they've also got that kid, Kevin Sullivan, who's coming up. The 14-year-old, the, like, American messy 14-year-old. Yeah, obviously, he's freaking 14. We'll see how that all turns out. But City literally already bought him. I'd love to have 31 scouts in league all. Yeah, well, got to get you that Premier League money, boss. <laughs> oh, Diamande was from North Zealand, somewhere in Scandinavia. They bought him for like three million, and then he spent two years developing at uh, Sporting. Not even, and now he's worth like a hundred million. And everybody, all like everybody in Europe, wants to get their hands on Usman Diamande. That dude, he, there is so much hype behind Usman, deservedly so. I'm not, I'm not trying to bash him or something here. Deservedly, there is so much hype behind Diamande. Look at Ginny's Regevich. 
My manager, my my assistant. They're saying that Jenny's Radjovic is world class right now. They're saying old Jenny's Radjovic is world class right now. So this is the situation. We are top of the league. After 19 matches played, we are three points clear of Manchester United. We are six points clear of Manchester City. We are sitting right on top of the perch. Arsenal has won the league for five straight years. They are in eighth. It looks for all the world like there will be a new winner. We are perfect in the Champions League. Six wins and six matches. We have guaranteed qualification in the top eight with two matches to play, which is crazy. We are in the League Cup semifinal against Nottingham Forest. We've got them home and away today while we play the January transfer window. And then we will probably have a rematch with Chelsea in a cup final after our FA Cup final defeat last season against Chelsea. And the FA Cup also kicks off today with an absolutely tasty tie against Deadpool and it's always sunny in Philadelphia in the third round of the FA. Hell yeah, brother. d -Nock, thank you for the 15 months. Thank you for supporting the stream. Enjoy your lack of ads, dude. I'll see you in the subsection of the Discord. Jeff, thank you for the 38 months. And Javon Miners, thank you for the 44 months. Two old heads. Rolling up to the chat. What's up? A Bosnian wonder kid I used to pray for days like this. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Is this the famous treble? Uh, you know, all I'm saying is the qu there is a quadruple going on right now, but there's a lot of time left in the Champions League. You know what I'm saying? There is a lot of time left. Uh, we're still in the Champions League group stage. Uh, we've just performed really well in our Champions League matches, but we had we had an easier draw than we got last year, too. So the draws also helped out a lot, uh, which has been real nice. Bellarmino Seca still 30 days on that promise. Are you freaking kidding me? Anyways. Uh, yeah, so Jenny's Rajevich is going to play. I think, uh, you know, very happy about that. Okay. And we start the stream with a definitely small match at home against Manchester City on January 1st. Totally small deal. Not even a big deal. Barely even care about it, you know? It's, uh, it's definitely just not a big deal and not even worried. All right, we're going to – do I want to do that, though? Do I really want to do that? Do I – in my brain, am I thinking that's the best thing to do here? I don't know. But we got a lot of transfer window nonsense to handle, but we got to handle this match first. We got to handle our business. Okay, yeah, Jash, Hajaj, definitely not Hajaj. Where's Rosales? Thank you. Uh, Coyote, Enrique, Lucius, Conda, Canelio, McIntosh, Mochaid, Kaya. That's a pretty good team. That's a pretty good looking team. That's what we got going on in the bench. I really like the way everything's setting up over here. Okay. Um, what are they doing? Well, they definitely just played a European match a day closer to this than we did. So good for them. Very, very happy for them. They have Darvich, Kamavinga. I don't think they're going to be starting this lineup, to be totally honest. I don't think that's who they're going to start. I think my staff is wrong. The English winter fixture congestion knows no bounds in all leagues. Yeah, no, it, it it goes crazy. It goes dumb. What role do we need to sign in this team? I'd love a third great center back, especially considering this offseason we might be selling Gonzalo Inacio. So I'd love to get like a nice 21-year-old superstar center back in. Shame those don't grow on trees, really. We owe Man City, apparently. So let's start this off with a fat dub. A giant, obese Mortally obese dub. Dude, their coach is Didier Deschamps now, so we're not even going against the bald fraud, but I am the hairy fraud. That, yeah. Harry fraud versus uh, Didier Deschamps. Yes, that is where we're at. The Serbia is going to uh, Bayern by the looks of it. Uh, that's an okay hire. I think that's an okay hire. Deserby's proven to be a pretty adaptable manager. But Bright Brighton also seems like just a factory of quality in terms of the way that club is run, so it's kind of hard to tell how good a man... And then, honestly, Deserby went from Shakhtar Donetsk as well. Like, I don't know. I don't remember if there's a stop in between those two teams, but Shakhtar is very similar in that it's incredibly well run, and they just they, their talent acquisition is amazing. And so it's really hard to tell, like, 
How much did the manager have to do with this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Manchester City is running with us in the league race. This is a mat like this is our last match against City the whole year. On January 1st. Don't forget the opposition instructions. I mean, I, yeah, I had them in there, but now you just made me scared. So I, uh, no, okay, yeah, they're, they're what they're supposed to be. A lot of hard tackling going on, but we have not picked up a card. Normally, we've picked up a card by now, so that's nice. This would be nice. There's not a lot going on in this game. Just a set piece goal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gonzalo Inacio. Oh, yes. Come on, man. The old man on the back line with a big goal. It's a weird Man City kit they're wearing also. Keeps throwing me off. I forget who I'm playing. Let's freaking go. Tottenham Hotspur. Oh, do it again. They don't even have a shot. If we can just score on these set pieces, it doesn't matter. Seca. Oh. Shakichi. Seca. He's onside because the fullback. And it's another corner. We're man citying man city right now. Are we? Oh, what's their possession? No, nope, they still have most of the ball. Damn you! Shakichi. Hendrick. Shakichi. My boy, George, the hammer. George, ref. Rigged. Voidenstein, thank you for the 16 months. Thank you for supporting the stream. My children. Gonzalo Inacio, big Marky Mark Rodriguez, Kieran Tall. Oh, the near post finish. He didn't see that coming. Hell yeah, brother. Rodriguez, are we giving him an assist for that? Absolutely. That was a one touch and finish. Hey, Man City, hold it. We lost to them earlier this year, didn't we? They beat us. Ha! Friggin' Marky, Mark. All right. Um, 2 0, halftime. Happy with that. So, Bayern have a lot going on behind the scenes? Yeah, they do. Bayern is in dysfunction for the first time in a long time. And that's what happens when you win 11 straight titles and then get embarrassed by Bayer Leverkusen of all teams. You know, there's going to be some frustration and some upheaval. But it's Bayern Munich. The institutions in place around Bayern Munich and the amount of money, like the revenue that they make in allowing them to spend under FFP are always going to make Bayern one of the most attractive jobs. Unless they have a sustained period of suckage, which I do not foresee. All right, Shikichi's coming off an injury. God bless America! Stay fit for five seconds, George. Five seconds, George. Give me McIntosh. George Shikichi has picked up a knock. Right as I'm going to reach to, like, sub him out. All right, we're playing this short. Oh, no, we're not. Jarrell Hato! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has he ever scored? Is he just a useless sack of meat? What is he doing? You just blame Khan and Sully, uh, Sully Ham, did you, uh, I could never say his name, but I know who you're talking about. Their downfall began with a Yes, I remember Oliver Khan being involved in some of the awkwardness. But no, I mean, the, to, to have it be your downfall that you're in the Champions League quarterfinal and you're just not going to win the cup or the league that year is a testament to how good they are. Also, a testament to how good McIntosh is. Thank you very much, Paul McIntosh.
I uh, be very happy to see you guys later. Kazumo Kanda, you are coming in. And Mr. Glass Cannon Mickey Vandevin is going to come out as well because I'm just always afraid that guy's going to get hurt. We'll bring in Michael Coyote. Um, chat, chat, chat. <laughs> we are a lot better than Manchester City. This is a wonderful development. God, McIntosh. You know, maybe we were too hard on him last year, you know? I always forget how young some of these kids are. McIntosh was 20 years old last year. He's 21, and he's starting to really come good. He's having a really, really, really good year while the hammer's been injured. Or, like, he, like, had just small muscle issues most of the year. So it's been nice. Quick thoughts on Barca's win. Impressive. I did not pick it. Very impressed. I'm happy for, you know, like, Lamina Ball, happy for Xavi. Be really fun to see uh, Xavi ride off into the sunset with the Champions League. Although I do think if he wins the Champions League, he's coming back. I think if he brings the Champions League back to Barcelona for the first time in like what, 13, 14 years, is it? Something like that. That he um that he would he would he would get the license in his own mind to come back. Gonzalo Ignacio, Keode. Nine years? Oh, it hasn't been as long as I thought. Obviously. That's what that means. <laughs> oh, there's Bellarmino. And there goes Bellarmino. And there goes Bellarmino. I do have one more sub, but I want Bellarmino to work out uh, his... I'm going gonna, gonna to bring in Miguel Lucius just to get him some match experience at home against Manchester City. UK football score, thank you for the five months, brother. I appreciate you supporting the stream with the Twitch Prime. Chelsea's going to win the FA Cup, I know it. And no one can change my mind. Tommy, I love your enthusiasm. When we had the best attacking trio in history, uh, it was, uh, it was, that was, was, did they win the Champions League in the last year of the MSN? Was that that was was that the year that they turned around the deficit against PSG? Did they win the Champions League that year? No, okay. That was the year that the Greek god was in Rome. Got it. Lots to Juve the round after. Oh, okay. We're getting multiple answers here. Point is, they didn't win it. They won it first year of MSN? What? When did MSN end? When did Neymar go to PSG? Six years ago? Seven years ago? Twenty seventeen. God, it was only. So I feel oh, it's amazing that it's an only, but it it's it was only seven years ago that MSN was going on. That's crazy. So fortunately, just a tight thigh for George. Um, we really just need to get him all the way up to match sharpness. But that is an amazing win that we just cranked out against Manchester City. I am incredibly happy with the team we put together. They're playing tremendous ball right now. We've just got to keep this up. We just controlled the hell out of that match. We were just able to win it very comfortably. Uh, and that puts us in a good spot. But, you know, there's a lot of matches left to play. Long season left. Say so we learned our lesson last season. That's a lesson that I've learned repeatedly playing football manager. Things can turn, and there's a lot still going on. Majid Leonardson, not when you don't like big matches and you're inconsistent, Majid. Okay, we do need to look at transfer stuff, though. So who's drawing interest? Uh, beside the obvious Bellarmino Seca that they're like going to spend $200 million on, I would accept nothing less than that $200 million. So Coyote... At an asking price of $100 million, apparently Manchester City has that. And they're down to clown.
Word. Thank you for the 41 months, Lyndon. Word. Let's see if we can get that offer for Coyote. I love Michael Coyote. He is an incredibly helpful cover piece, but 100 million for a fullback is 100 million for a fullback. And he is not like one of the best fullbacks in the world, so he wouldn't react well to being offered out. Okay. That's fun. Ingley and McAvoy. I uh, apparently that dude's on the market would prefer to stay at Tottenham, but we'll go ahead and offer him out. You know, we'll just test something out. Marcelo Enrique transfer interest to Marcelo Enrique. Now you have my attention. Now I'm paying attention. Okay. Because I, th this guy has not really exploded onto the scene since he got here. And, uh, you'd prefer to stay at Tottenham. You know what? We'll go ahead and stick an offer out just to see what kind of is, it was on the table. The interesting Gonzalo Anasia is from teams that are, how do I say this? In, well, I tr do I trigger the contract extension? Let me see if I can renegotiate this. Okay. Um, star players a little high, Josh. That's a little high. Thinking squad player. Let me know. Didn't think so. Little little sus there, Joshy boy. A little sus. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trigger that contract extension then. And we'll probably just let that contract run out after this because I like you as a backup left back. I think you are a great rotational left back. Um, so we'll go ahead and trigger that, and hopefully he does not get upset. I don't imagine he would because he's not upset at the moment. I've just, you know, I, I, I took a look at what might be required to keep him around, and I didn't like it very much. And so we'll go ahead and extend his contract and... Just kind of make that dream work. All right, Mickey Vandeven. Would you be uh, it'd be difficult to find a a club for my client because of the suitable? De yeah, okay. Well, let's go ahead and offer him out anyways. And then Festi Ebosele. There is no value in Festi Ebosele, but I like Festi Ebosele. The value in him is that I like him. So that's it for our offers out. Let's go ahead and look at who like who we might want to go after in this window. Bro thinks he's one in a million. Yeah, he's an idiot. Kid, thank you for the twenty three months. Rather ambitious. Do I not discuss with the agent before the extension? No. I, I, I don't like asking the agent because it affects, uh, it kind of locks me into how much money I'm able to negotiate to and spend. All right, so this is our short list. These are our best players that we currently know about. This is Adilson. I've never liked Adilson. You know, I do like is Dominic Pavluk. I have always liked Dominic Pavlak, and that is because Dominic Pavlak is an absolutely amazing player. George, thank you for the 37 months. Thanks for being a great mod. I appreciate you. Oh, I like Palma, but I don't want to buy him. Guy's a god. I know he's a god. He's a physical freak with the incredible height and athletic, the balance, agility, jumping. I mean, this guy would be the greatest target forward of all time. I mean, I realize that's not an appropriate use of his talents, but this guy is a, he, he's a god. He also likes big matches, which is sick. Amazing passer, works his butt off, creative, great control of the ball, really talented finisher, tries first time shots, plays one twos, tries killer balls off. And this dude is a lethal attacking player absolute superstar i don't know where they're playing him on the field but he is a star he's also valued at 131 million dollars which is an absolute a barrel that is a barrel of cash daniel lodato that dude doesn't move he's a statue so close to the 
This guy's fun. $27 million for a guy that can't do anything. God, love that. Love when that happens. Lorish Cabongo is going to waste away at Nice. So unloved with his 20 agility. I, I want to. I want to love him. Then there's Richard Vig. The only reason nobody signs this absolute idiot is because he wants to be a star player. I don't know if we want to throw that 131 million. We do have it. We do have the 131 million in the budget. Um, I don't know if we want to chuck our entire hard-earned transfer budget at one guy and Dominic Pavlak, but he is one pretty spectacular dude. Uh, he is definitely one pretty spectacular dude. My concern mainly be like in the Champions League registration, we are basically up to the limit. Uh, you know, there, we, we, we would have to remove somebody in order to add a new registration to Le Champions League. Do, 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 do. And that is a concern. I'm going to remove that asking price. Uh, we're going to offer out Simone Scotta. As we are very interested in moving Simone Scotta, as he is not somebody that features in this team much. I'd, I'd need at least $60 million to make that Simone Scotta deal worth it. I just don't know if I can sell myself on Pavlok for $131 million. That's so much money, Chad. It's, it's, it's a lot of cheddar. That is a lot of cheddar. Good. We only have $845 million in net debt from the friggin' bank loans. Our transfer debt is actually a positive $45 million. So unusual for me when I'm managing these types of clubs. Doing a pretty good job there. I know the title is emotionally prepared to spend money. He's literally one of the best players ever. That's strong. That's strong. And he's really not in an area of need. We have very good forwards. We have a ton of very, very good and talented forwards and uh, midfielders and whatever. Where would we even play him? Play two up top. You could play like a 4 2 4. And then it would be Pavlok because he actually has more jumping reach than Rodriguez. He's such a good. Fo oh my God, he's so good. It doesn't matter, but it does matter, though. I mean, like, where are we, you know. We have certain playing time expectations at various parts of the field with guys that are very talented that we don't want to anger necessarily. Dude is better than Bellingham. I mean, this is like what everybody's hoping Jude Bellingham will become is 23-year-old Dominic Pavlak. Oh, 131 million, man. I can't believe I got baited, too. Who is that other guy that we loved so much? What was his name? I don't... Uh, the other German that we really, really liked that was also incredibly versatile. Oh... Uh... Man, we are going to do it, aren't we? Amazingly, it seems there is somehow almost no reason for us not to do this. We have managed our finances brilliantly. This guy even adapts well, and we do already have a lot of Germans in our team. We've got more Germans than English guys. Schwartz. Oh, yes, the Schwartz. Fine. I'm emotionally ready to spend money. We have matched Dominic Pavlak's $131 million release clause. I am nauseous. I feel queasy. It's a lot of money. 
It's a lot of money. All right, he wants to be an important player. Uh, it's going to be tricky. Get negotiated, fool! That suggest is wrong, probably. Uh, no relationship with Simon Gutza, but I don't think he's going to hate me too much. <laughs> God, that's so funny. Wow. Like all that patience that you have there, goat. So that's really funny. Goodness gracious. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Listen to me, goat. So listen to me. All right. We're going to remove the 10% yearly salary increase. We're going to drop that salary down to there. I am going to give you team of the year bonuses, a cool million dollars, top goal scorer bonus at a cool million dollars. All right, I'm going to give you an assist bonus for every freaking assist that you cook out over the course of this contract, and I'm going to put that at $40,000 per assist. All right, I'm going to give you a win the Champions League bonus, right, of a cool $500,000 and I will give you a winning the Premier League bonus. I We don't need that. $18.7 million per year base salary on a five-year contract. $22.8 million per year Im uh, wage impact expected overall. That's the deal we're looking at. That's the deal we want to do. Hey, what's up? My name's Chad. I'm here on behalf of an unnamed Premier League club, and I would like to negotiate a transfer. Uh, yeah, totally different. It's definitely not Tottenham, so you totally negotiate again. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, it wasn't great. Uh I was emotionally prepared, but apparently not fiscally prepared. I am really stunned that he rejected that. I thought we put some pretty good like equivalent value in that transfer. But whatever, you know. Uh what do I know, right? I'm just a guy. I am but a humble man. This dude, when does he turn 18? August? Sick. Where's Calvin? Dang it. I need to sign some. Okay, so it's the first. By the end of the window, we should have the ability to go after him again. So I'm actually not going to spend the, uh, the rest of the money that we have. Uh, yeah. It was the non-negotiable tag? No, that makes it more likely to be accepted. I put the non-negotiable tag on because he came back with orange, which meant we were sending... So the reason you put the non-negotiable tag 
If they come back with orange, then you only have one more offer left anyways. So you can just add that little boost to their likely to their likeliness to accept, you know, your uh your offer there. Soy boy. Where is he headed? Juventus. Good for him. I think he feels he should be getting more playing time to improve his chances. Uh, to improve his chances of playing Euro at the Euros. Oh, okay. He wants to play more so that he can uh, play at the Euros. Oh, I'm in the Euros so I get the playing time that was agreed. Uh, Simone. Simone. Convince. He's furious. That probably won't work. Yeah, all right. Unfortunately, Dominic Pavlik and his agent did not buy the disguise, so we're going to have to wait. Because we did that on the first, we will probably be able to negotiate with Pavlok again at some point in this window, which would be nice. We will check in like 10 days or something, but we are not going to spend any of the money we have set aside for Dominic Pavlok until then, because we could get Dominic Pavlok. Uh, dismiss, promise, compromise, back down. Can I? Simone, I really don't want to do this, man, but I also do. I also do really want to do this. Uh, so can I? Uh, can I? I, I can't sell him. You just don't fit my plans the minute. If I'm not a good fit here, then I need to leave. Why can't I agree with that? I'll look to find you a new club. I can't agree with that. Okay, cool. So Simone Scott has handed in a transfer request. Kind of expected that. He has not played up to his requirement for playing. And I, yeah, he wants to play for Italy at the Euros, so. We are going to work on a January move for Simone Scotta. But I will not, you know, I'm not going to be afraid to uh, wait until the summer if I need to. No immediate interest in Simone Scotta on that front either. So we're going to bring in intermediary offers and see if that works out. Absolutely no reason not to. And I, my aim, again, is to get at least $60 million for Simone Skoda. He's a very talented striker. I think we can get some cash. Shola, baby. I think Schwartz would be better. Nah. That guy's better than Schwartz. Now, Schwartz does play a little ball-winning midfielder, which is nice. Barcelona closing in on an offer for Coyote. $46.5 million? Yeah, I don't think so. But I, I'm, I'm more interested in this Manchester City lurking around at the $100 million valuation. That's got me real intrigued because I don't love the contract situation I'm in with KO Day right now. It ain't great. I'm not loving it. Is that a wig? I uh, know. Just dyed my hair and got a hair transplant down to my eyebrows. Likely story. Yeah, what hair? What are you even talking about? Whoa, Mama Mia. Well, what's all this, then? Is that money from Real Madrid there? All right, he's interested, but fortunately, he's not going to be unsettled. We just got smacked with an offer. No, Paul Mirage. They have some money, actually, apparently. He's not interested in speaking to them. I would take $70 million for Marcelo Enrique. I don't think Paul Mirage has that, but, you know, it might be worth just uh, having a little look-see. So, Real Madrid offering me a grand total of $71 million for Gonzalo Inacio. Uh, let's go ahead and make that. Let's, you know, up this a little bit. Let's go up to like, uh, what, would, what would that be? That'd be $87.5 million for 30-year-old center back Gonzalo Inacio. Okay, I just added twenty million in value to this transfer. Uh, I added nineteen million in total value to this transfer, mostly up front. I fully expect them to reject this outright. There you go. 
I didn't add a lot of value to that transfer, but I don't want to take 70 million. I think we might be able to get more than that, especially in January. We'd have to really scramble to find another starting level center back. I don't have anybody that's like in my targeting sites right now that would be able to play at his level. Athmos, thank you for the 35 months. <laughs> what is Fuzzy Green has four legs and kills you if it falls on you? A pool table. I mean, true. Yeah, maybe maybe depends what height the pool table is falling from, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow, sick. An $18 million offer for Simone Skoda. I'm going to hate this whole transfer thing, am I? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate it. I never got that email, did I? Oh, I did. I just ran. I went, I went through it. I ignored it because I knew I was going to hate it so much. Nice for 18 million. 18? Goodness gracious. That's, uh, that's absurd. That's absolutely ridiculous. All right, let's, uh, let's get some of the youngins in there. Let's get some of the youngins in there. Bellarmino Seca still working his way up the sharpness. I feel you. Okay. Ben El Hajaj. Little Salis. Speaking of the youngins. Oh, my dude. England McAvoy's sick, so I can't play him. Oh, that sucks. Kazukanda definitely counts as one of the youngins. I. Coyote counts as one of the youngins. Actually, we probably I probably should get a uh, Colombo in there. What what other positions can Colombo play? He can play right wing. Can't play left wing, but he can play right wing. I have not given Daniel Colombo a look at all. Let's at least give this poor guy a chance to play. This guy's been on the team all year and hasn't touched the field. I forgot he was here. Did I go to Turkey? I mean, for lunch. Detective. Detective. I am watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine right now, so that is notable. And, uh, do, do, let, let's put Simone Scott in the shop window. Can we do that? No. We have Belshir Canelio. I, I don't, what, what type of player do you want to be? A Trek Wartista. You're not a winger. You're more of just a guy that goes onto the outside and like freaking sends it. So I'm gonna make you a Trek. Trek Wartista. Uh Kazu Kanda is going to be Yeah, we'll just make him an inside forward. I don't really care. Um So Canelio Muchait Kaya is going to start at striker because why the hell not? Rico Lewis is not going to be on the bench. George Shikichi and Bellarmino Seca are taking five after they were like recovering from their injuries or whatever. Simone Skoda. You know what? I am going to put him in the shop window. We're playing freaking Rexa, uh, Rexham. We should be able to do this perfectly fine. Should be able to handle this. And also Luca Jash, the youngster from Australia. First appearance for the club after so many appearances on the bench. Get after it, Luca Jash. All right, wait. Uh, 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 Gonzalo, sweet. All right, little FA Cup nonsense. Us against Ryan Reynolds and Wrexham FC. We're going to add a really nasty chapter to their TV show. <laughs> And we're at home, so this is a big paycheck for Wrexham that they're getting. And we've just fully rotated the team. They might be in the championship. I probably should have looked that up. But Athmos, thank you so much for the 35 months. You are uh, nearly, nearly to the three years supporting the stream. I really appreciate it. Is this real hair? Yeah. I'm putting on a disguise so that I can start the new negotiation for a transfer. Will I be at TwitchCon Rotterdam? Yes, I will be. I will be at TwitchCon Rotterdam. 100%. I hope to see you guys there. Anybody that happens to be within a train's shout of Rotterdam, if you want to swing by for the weekend, do a little TwitchCon Europing. Oh, Canelio. Dang it. 
but I will be there. So thanks for asking. So I need to remember to tell people that I will be there. <laughs> Dexter. Dexterious. I'll bring the wig. I mean, if you want. All right, we're not really dominating in a way that I would have hoped, but Columbo's actually not playing terribly, which is nice. You know, outside of the fact that we are as, uh, playing terribly as a team, Columbo's not playing terribly. I've heard that one before, man. It is it is a good one, though. That is a high-quality dad joke. Oh, let's shoot that. Don't give it to Columbo. You shoot it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No wonder we haven't scored, dude. No wonder we haven't scored. Chat. God. You're just letting me get away with that. Okay. <sighs> Please stand. And remove your caps for the performance of the FA Cup anthem. It's the FA Cup. The FA Cup. The All right, good. You know, that was a weird first half. Playing in such a historic and important tournament like the FA Cup without having heard the FA Cup anthem. It just feels dirty. It feels wrong. And I'm glad we could get that done. Glad we could do that. Hey, excuse me. I'm going to need that ball. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad we sang the FA Cup anthem right before halftime. Okay, I'm happy that we've done any possession. No, this isn't good enough. Absolutely unacceptable. We're going to come out here. We're going to be more aggressive in the second half. Okay. Um, actually, based off personnel, I'm just going to go ahead and modify this. Shadow strike are you. Attacking midfield are you. Uh, we're going to play narrow. Uh, Lucius is going to be joining that. I'm going to put both fullbacks on attack. Uh, just because the personnel we have, that kind of makes more sense. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Defense has been fine. Control of the match has been fine. They have one highlight on a long free kick. We just, uh, we need to create goal scoring opportunities. So we're going to bring the boys in and see if we can do it. Keep the pressure on. Get the ball into scary positions. It's Kazukanda. It's Lucius. It is Coyote. It's Lucius. That was saved. Yeah, all right. Brazilian Fury, thank you for the 19 months. I appreciate you supporting the stream. New hair is looking lovely. Thank you. It's definitely very much in my face. Canelio, dang it. Oh, yo, Benel Hajaj. With a steamer. Just missed it. Son of a quiche, thank you for the 100 bits. Come on, Columbo. Come on, Columbo. You're just calling it off after that? What is this nonsense? Canelio. Oh, he should have played it short. The story of my life. Have you heard about the new VAR and financial rules, the Premier League in England? Yeah, they're doing semi-automated VAR, uh, which makes sense. I don't know why they weren't doing that already, considering it's like the richest league in the world. But I'm glad that they voted it through now, obviously, as somebody that watches the Prem. Uh, and the financial changes also make more sense. Uh, the sliding scale thing. You can spend a percentage of your revenue instead of like a hard set number over 
That's really the only change. Is they're just saying, okay, you you spend instead of you can spend this much over your revenue or whatever. It's like you can sp you can spend this percent of your revenue on wages and whatever. That's what UEFA already does. So they're just they're, they're, uh, it sounds like at least in terms of their application, they're trying to line it up more. What they're not changing about the financial rules in England is the stupid way in which the punishments are applied where like you can be punished for multiple years in one season and you're just like there should be a period where once the season starts you cannot accumulate any more punishments for that season then the punishments go towards the next season because the fact that everton has had three is is like moved in the table without playing a match three separate times this year is ridiculous like, if you're going through a season, you should freaking know where the teams stand. You shouldn't have to be like, well, on the appeal, they might get two points back. Sam, thank you for the prime. Appreciate the two months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Many me, thank you for the prime. Oh, we just spent $10 of Jeff Bezos' money, chat. Let's go. <laughs> Canelio, yes. Doig, uh, yes. Columbo, one more. Yes, Coyote. Oh. All right. We're 60 minutes in. Nothing good has happened. That is not good. Kazu Kanda's obviously been bad the whole game, so I'm going to go ahead and get him off. Um, I am going to get Simone Skoda off. We put him in the shop window, and he put on a brilliantly bad display. Uh, respect. We're going to bring in Javi Guerra to work on his match sharpness because Miguel Lucius is nervous, and also, more importantly, he's not doing anything. Uh, and I'm going to bring in Indrik just because Indrik's a really good player and will probably absolutely run Wrexham ragged. I do not want an FA Cup replay. I am playing a ton of matches this season. I would love to not add another one to it. Please and thank you. Bin Al Hajaj. That would have been nice. Okay, I'm going to use that opportunity to just go ahead and uh, chuck this up that way. Just do that. Could also bring in Ginny Sledejevic, but he is tired, and I don't want to do that. Very important side note. <laughs> <coughs> But what about Man City? Hurry up and sort them up. I mean, it. well, here's the thing. It hit, like, and people keep saying, well, what about, oh, okay, we just scored. Goal! It's Rosales! And Tottenham leads against Wrexham. And Rosales stares into the Wrexham fans. Really? That's where we're at? We scored on a set piece the 63rd minute against what I think is a League One team. And we're staring into the fans, and I don't even get a replay. All right. Cool. Nice goal, Francisco. I appreciate it. We will uh, stay aggressive till 75th, 80th minute. All right, McIntosh. Keeping that good form going. Oh, Endrick got a yellow. Glad to see he's stuck into the task at hand here. Right after subbing in, picked up a yellow card to set the tone. Okay. Yeah, but look, I mean, like, the, the, unfortunately, you know, investigations don't just happen instantly. And when there's 115 charges and the charges against Manchester City are very, they're much more complex. Everton's was a, basically a decision about whether they were going to honor Everton's request for like massive amounts of pandemic leeway because Everton was admitting they'd already broken the rules and by how much. And so with Manchester City, what you're dealing with is a lot of different instances of trying to determine how much they inflated the value of things to inflate their revenue, whether it be ticket sales or this sponsor or that spot that requires a lot of legwork and a lot of proper investigation. Cause you know that the high powered lawyers for Manchester city are going to, Oh, nice. They're going to tie you up at each point. Right. Yeah. It's not just that Nottingham forest and Everton admitted it. Their case was much more simple. Their case wasn't how much revenue do you have, it's you spent too much money for your revenue. City's case is you inflated your revenue through a bunch of different, like, shady dealings. It's a much more complicated case. And because you know that, it, you know, it's going to be dragged around for likely years, you got to make sure you dot all the I's and cross all the T's and, like, actually complete the investigation. It takes a very long time. I'm not jealous of the people that have to go through and do all that investigating. Also, congrats to Ben El Hojaj for what I believe was his first goal for the club on that corner. 
So big ups to him. McIntosh, Cornelio! And Mac was off though. Mac was off. Where's Benel from? Uh, he is a homegrown UK player. He's English, but he plays for the Israeli national team. So he's got dual nationality. I don't know where he was born. He came up through academies in the English league system, though. So he's been here a real long time, at least. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, that's a problem. Daniel Mardani makes it 2-1. And all of a sudden, Wrexham's the only team with a goal from the run of play. Mom, I'm scared. Uh, dang it. That's just not fun. Um, all right, guys. Let's see out the home victory over Wrexham. They just ask whether you won or not. They don't ask by how many. You know? This is a classic lower league goal, too. Just a flick-on header. Caught our line looking a little high. Luka Jash, terrible goalkeeping, honestly. Way out of position. Mardani goes for it and has plenty of room to aim for. Oh. So that but that's the whole Manchester City situation. Like everybody getting all like all their feathers ruffled by like, well, they haven't why are they working on Man City? They're working on Man City. It just takes a really long time. And then of course, once they do it, there's gonna be a giant appeal, and it's just it's gonna take years. It is going to take a long time. Benel, Hajaj, Marcelo Enrique, Kaya. Oh, it's brilliant to Canelio, and that is bad. Okay. You better thank our two center backs for actually knowing how to score. Oh, my goodness. You see that little pullback by Belshior Canelio? Oh. Sometimes it's not incompetency for delays. Sometimes it's actually it actually happens for good reasons. Yeah, I mean, uh, but that's another reason I think these punishment things are stupid. I think there should be a punishment window, and it's the summer. And once the league starts, all punishments are kind of put on the docket for next year. Right? But I, I, it's just stupid that, like, the table moves as much as it does just in the middle of a season. I think that's really dumb. And Everton's now been punished for two different seasons in the same season, <laughs> which is just wild. Like, that's just clearly a lack of... Uh, bureaucratic structure where like you should at least be getting punished for one season a season they're now being punished for two seasons in one season but they're unkillable Everton will somehow find a way to stay up because they are just unkillable you could probably give them a 30 point penalty and they'd have their best season ever you just have to tell Everton they're about to get relegated and they'll pop up with just enough Imagine the NCAA investigations took this long, which is about the close. Yeah, well, I mean, they do, actually, sometimes. I think the Kansas basketball one took a couple of years. But, yeah. Luton's doing its darndest. Yeah, they are. But, I look, I hope Luton stays up. That'd be a lot of fun. But Luton was always going to be outgunned. Those parachute payments are going to change the club, though. Luton has been changed forever by the fact that it got into the Premier League, whether it stays or not. Oh, one more, Indrik. Thank you. Finally, Wrexham's been put away. It's 3-1 Tottenham Hotspur. Indrik had to come in to score the goal. And we advance in the FA Cup to the fourth round. Goodness gracious. Oh, yeah, there's two. Oh, oh nice finish. But there's two matches going on right now. Olympiakos and Fenerbahce, and Olympiakos has the lead within 10 minutes. Remember, the final is in Athens, which would be sick. Victoria Pilsen and Fiorentina is underway in the Conference League quarterfinal. Remember, Victoria Pilsen did not score or concede in the entire round of 16. Two nil-nils, and they won the penalty shootout. So that is at least a very hard team to score against. They're going to come out, and they know exactly what they're trying to accomplish. Luton needs to keep doing the same, not investing in players with big salaries, underperforming. Players on high salaries are normally the killers for smaller clubs. Yeah, I mean, that's how Everton got into so much trouble to begin with. They started giving monster salaries to these guys that the big clubs didn't want. And that is exactly a great way to get yourself in trouble. But if you keep your wage structure sustainable, which they did, then you're in a pretty good spot. Now, there's a lot of dumb things about the financial rules, but it's understandable because they're very new with a lot of kinks being worked out in the system. 
Like when the windows for the financial rules start and end. That's kind of funny. Kaya. Dang it. One more goal for the road, Mujahid. The teams left of the Europa League quarters is really interesting. Oh, well, yes. The Europa League quarterfinals are fantastic. West Ham against Bayer Leverkusen is amazing. They are rigged to keep the big clubs big. I mean, yeah, that's my complaint about FFP, obviously. That has been my complaint about FFP for a long time. It's rigged to keep the big clubs big. As it is. Absolutely rigged to keep the big clubs big. Luton will never mess up with money again after a 30-point deduction and falling into the conference league. You say that, but that institutional memory fades. It's totally possible. You never, you know, 10 years from now, Luton could be in big financial trouble again. That like, <laughs> All you need is the person that was in charge of that to not be there anymore. That's, that, that is the only requirement for that to go away. Really shows the power of the Premier League that Bayer, uh, Leverkusen, and West Ham's considered a competitive time. I mean, West Ham's a good team, first of all. Like, obviously, they're not in Champions League spots in the Premier League. But West Ham is a good team that won the Conference League last year. So that's part of the reason why uh, it's hyped up. Also, the fact that Leverkusen's got a lot to worry about in the league and West Ham doesn't is much, you know, like their main focus is the Europa League. I wouldn't say Leverkusen's main focus is the Europa League. Wow, our boy Cabela Mokowena is going to Manchester United. The player we brought to St. Etienne for just 325000 from our old stomping ground in South Africa is going to Manchester United for $81 million, potentially up to $90 million to St. Etienne. Yeah, we left, uh, we left our old club in a really healthy place. They finished 8th, 9th. They're in ninth again trying to battle their way back into a European place. But we got St. Etienne promoted and created a very sustainable team. And now one that is going to have a lot of money, I'm sure it will spend incredibly stupidly. <laughs> I'm sure it will spend that money horrifically. And I can't wait to look at it and then scoff. But you know what? I'm really happy for Cabela Mokowena. That guy was not highly touted coming out of South Africa, and he is a very good player and does deserve the hype. Do, 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 do. This guy's not good enough. Calvin, on the other hand, definitely one of those players that we might sign, especially as we get close to the, the kind of deadline area. I really, really like Calvin. We nearly signed him. We had a deal agreed that was then canceled by a transfer embargo, which... Definitely hoping one of those doesn't pop up again this window because there's definitely some like weird interest always circling around buying Tottenham these days in this save. Oh, the draw. Give me somebody easy. That's all I care about. Somebody easy. Somebody easy. Stockport away. Banger. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Stockport away. Yes, please. Sounds great. Can't wait. What was that? League one logo, league two logo, something like that. Wonder what's up with Maxime Rodier. I think every time we've looked at him, he's um I don't remember what old Maxime little DA is up to. Well, I mean, he's still hanging. Oh, he's seven caps for France. Oh my god, we created a monster. He had 31 appearances, 12 goals, six assists last year. So he stayed fit, and played well. He's played every league match for Saint at the end this year. He is a uh I mean, in 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 short, he is a Saint at the end legend. That guy who had never played a first team match when we got there, really. We brought him up from the reserves and turned him into a winner. Turned him into an animal. Turned him into an absolute beast. Wow. Okay. Uh, three fourths of my back line just vanished. So I guess we're going two starting center backs and Bestia Bazel. Well, Rico is probably going to get a little upset if we don't play him in something. Uh, I'll play Rico, George Chikichi. 
Uh, where's Kieran Tall? Vandevin and Inacio. Get the rest set tomorrow. We'll see where all the fitness is at. Away against Nottingham Forest in the League Cup semifinal. Kind of when you start to care about the League Cup. See, that's not the amount of money I was hoping for. And he's... Oh, Twenty million. Twenty. This is bad. We're in a bad spot right now with Skoda. We're in a really bad spot with Skoda. Did I get the Schwartz guy? No, Schwartz re-upped this contract and is no longer interested in us. And I don't think he's worth 30, 131 million. I'm going to be entirely honest with you. I don't think he's worth 131 million. So I think the other guy is, obviously. Uh, KO Day, what was it, 32 up front with additional installments and after league. I'm going to remove the after league appearance thing because I want this money to at least be counting towards my account right now. I don't, they're just going to reject that. That's an insane increase, but they're not anywhere near where I want them to be. You hear me? Are you interested to speed other clubs? All right, we're, we're going to keep offering out Simone Skoda. I believe, I believe somebody other than Nice is going to be there. Who's not playing as much as they think they should be? Don't tell me it's freaking Bellarmino. Okay. Oh, that's Skoda's promise. Okay. It's like, I'm playing Bellarmino Seca as many times as I friggin' can. That dude just gets tired easily. Leave me alone. Just unload him. We have enough money. That's a lie, dude. See, that's a, that's a dangerous uh, thought process there. We do not have enough money. Because we're, if we want to go buy that one guy for $131 million, which is something that, you know, we're clearly entertaining that idea right now. We want to buy that guy for $131 million. I know it's probably hard to take me seriously with this freaking wig on. Um, <laughs> then we, You know, we're going to need some extra money on top of that. I want to maximize the value of every player I have in my team, honestly. I want to maximize the value of every player I have in my team. All right, Guerra and Rodriguez are both on yellow cards. Might not be available for the second leg. That wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the entire world. Uh, where's Bellarmino Seca? He's now ready to play a full 90. Hopefully, need to get that match sharpness up, dude. Same with George Shikichi. He is just match sharp. He's been running a match sharpness deficit this entire season. Absolutely awful. Uh, Colombo, you are off for Kazu Kanda. I feel like there is a hole in this team. There is. We don't have a center back, uh, which is obviously a problem. So we're going to go there, and then we're going to... Bring in uh, Doeg. Okay. That's that. Gongsted, Lewis, Hato, Inacio, Vandevin, uh, Guerra, Rodriguez, uh, Indrik, Seca, Shikichi, Kieran Tall. We want to deliver on the road in this first leg of the League Cup. Uh, we want to, they are desperately, we want to get to the League Cup. We lost in the League Cup semifinal last year, 1-0 on aggregate. We didn't score a goal. It was brutal. So I uh, I would like a, a really flashy first performance because this is a home and away situation. All right, because we have, uh, we got four tournaments that we're in, right? Four different competitions. I obviously want to win every game that we play and... I actually do a little eye of faith in you. We don't have we don't have a lot of other big matches coming up. Come on, boys! <laughs> Give them the goods now. Give them the goods. Thank you for uh, streaming and making me procrastinate my master thesis. Dude, you were so welcome. You should probably do that at some point, though, so set aside some time. Skoda's so bad. He was pretty decent last year. He's just not getting the run this year because we obviously brought in Kaya uh, in January. Why the wig? Uh, we're trying to be disguised. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I just kind of left it on. We're trying to be disguised so that the agent of a particularly affluent player will not recognize us and start negotiating with us again. Oh, Li Mingyi. That is a Chinese name through and through. Uh, 
my interest is piqued. 31 caps for China, 23 years old, came up at Beijing Guan. Okay, interesting. Normally, they come up through the Portuguese kind of Chinese affiliates, but this guy spent four years at Beijing Guan before going to Salzburg in the Nottingham Forest. Cool. Just a rare sighting. Straight to the Premier League from Beijing Guan. Just got back from work, was uh, like, let me check Z's stream and saw the hair, and I kid you not, I had to double take. Yeah, you know, I just uh, really wanted to sauce it up. All right, come on. Early goal. Early goal. Oh, no, we're getting absolutely shut down by Li Min Yi. Oh, that's got to be our ball. That was a loose touch. That's just excellent defense there by Markathan. Markathy Rodriguez. Chikichi. It'd be that world-class winger that you are, why don't you? Oh, get it back to him. Ooh, a little scoop ball to Indrik, who has another yellow card. And Seca! Oh. Hendrick not being shy recently. Oh, good header. Go. No. Just freaking why did it, you turn it like a pass it, pass it, pass the ball. Whoa. Oh, my God. This guy's an amazing center back. He just ruined it. Seca. My grandma shoots harder than that. Ridiculous. All right, it is getting itchy, though. I'm going to take it off. It's getting quite itchy. Ooh, Seca. Tall. That was all offside. Every part of that was offside. But anytime we need to negotiate with the agent, I've got the wig right here. I'm ready. I can throw it back on. I'm unstoppable. Didn't know you were Swedish, dude. Nice. You know, you know blonde hair dye is purchased more per capita in Sweden than any other country in the world? Love that fact. Wow. Sent that dude to the shops. Indre. How did we not score? I want to go watch this again, though. Because this poor guy is just. <laughs> wallowing in the mud over there. Maybe his old people want to stay. But I don't know. I don't know the reason. I just, you know, I read that as an article. could not be true anymore you know maybe the u.s has really upped its blonde hair dye purchasing game i don't know it's not really something i keep i don't keep my finger on the pulse oh kieran tall oh there we go indrick taking it wide getting it back i mean how have we not scored this guy's got 18 finishing kieran tall and that is a that is an advanced forwards goal all day Indrik put it on a plate, signing, like just shining silverware. The fine china was out. Shanked it. Obliterated that chance. Oh, come on, Indrik. That's so disappointing, man. Does Tall have adaptability issues? Uh, he's English. <laughs> So at least I think he already speaks the language. I'm not sure. So fortunately, be, you know, like if they're of that nationality, speak that language. Um, it's the maybe rare situation where they wouldn't. Adaptability does not come into play in that situation. Kieran Tall is A-OK. -okay, adapted immediately. He's just having a terrible game. He's had, I mean, he scored a goal earlier this stream. He scored a goal against Manchester City in the Premier League. A week ago. I'm just being hard on him. Because, I don't know, I expect him to be able to finish off that kind of incredibly easy chance. And if he doesn't, I do happen to have another world-class striker around that can handle it. Goodness gracious me. Mickey Vandeven, you gave me three consecutive heart attacks. Oh, yeah. Too many Germans in the team? <laughs> it's a psyop. You caught me. On this episode of the Daily Mail is the Premier League 2 Foreign.
Now, yeah, we do it. How many Germans do we have? We have Shikichi, we have Rodriguez, and we have Mujahid Kaya. That's really it. We have three. We have three Germans. How many English guys do we have? Kieran Tall. I don't. Macintosh. Oh, Rico. Uh, we, uh, yeah, so we have Rico, we have Kieran Tall, we have Paul McIntosh. Festi Abizele might be. No, he's Irish. Sorry. Uh, oh, and Doig is Scottish. So we have three Englishmen in our match day squad today. And three Germans. Oh, Bellarmino. God, you were way too good to ever make a mistake. I'm offended every time he makes a mistake. Oh, my goodness. Hendrick. 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 Hendrick! Gera, please! Oh, I'm numb. I am numb. I am numb. I'm numb. I'm numb and I'm dumb. And I'm proud. I am numb. <laughs> that is the best midfielder in the world doing that. Nottingham, uh, dude, we just can't score. This is going to be one, two, three, four, five consecutive halves in the League Cup semifinal. We have not scored a goal. I had 2.39 XG and we didn't have a penalty. That's it. That was all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, that was, that's it. Okay. <laughs> the prayer sound stuck around for a while. Oh, okay. That, that was it. That was it. I just, you know, not every trip to, not every trip to the church of the FM gods has to be, you know, that was it. <laughs> okay. Keep playing the way you have been and the result will come. That's pretty clear. Uh, I'm going to give everybody an opportunity at least to make something happen here in the second half. 10, maybe 15 minutes, and then we will make, you know, one of those, like, four-man changes to get the fresh ideas on the field for the last 30. Oh. Okay. Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, can I? Oh, no. Jarrell Hato on the yellow. Don't like that. Him and Andrick. Very frisky these days. There it is. Bellarmino Seca skipping through two dudes. Oh, it's Kieran. Yes! <laughs> It's Garrett Tall taking advantage of a mishap at the back for Nottingham Forest. Morgan Gibbs White. Not quite. And after an abysmal first half, it is Kieran Tall's night after all. It's his lucky night. Hey, dude, the prayers worked. Quick trip to the FM gods. 
Quick, uh, quick little stop over with the FM guides. We're all right. Oh, Endrick. Now he's feeling it. Endrick. Endrick or Mass? Mass. Better passer. The scenes of Tall missed that. Yeah, we would have been back in the we 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 we, we would have been back in church, brother. <laughs> oh, Gara, that was an accidental through ball. Yikes. An accidental through ball. Oh, we got oh uh, we know. Oh, oh, oh. Inacio, Seca, loving this. Javi Guerra, what are we thinking? Kieran Tall, in on goal. Offside, okay. Well, that sucks. Uh, crack open my sandwich here real quick. Doo-doo, doo-doo. A little uh, Colby Jack cheese, turkey, and mustard. I packed myself a lunch. Lay it off. Yes. Chagichi Gara. All right. George Chagichi. Let me go ahead and get him for old Polly McIntosh. I think. Uh, Let's keep uh, Gara's mad sharp now. Nice. Let's get Rodriguez off. I'm going to go with Jenny's Rajovic and drop Javi Gara. Actually, going to get them both. Where's Rico? Can I get Rico charges out here real quick, please? And then we'll go Festi up as LA. Go right back. Okay. Uh, and Marcelo Enrique to center back. We're going to Salo and Asiel. There's your wall of four subs that I promised. A lot of matches going on. The mass hate is crazy. Everybody hates mass because he didn't score like 40 goals in a season. But that man was legit. Nobody, you know, you know, he was such a good player. Any team in the world would love to have Mateo Mass. If you don't know who Mateo Mass is, he was a uh, a winger on our our team from last year who is in the Hall of Saints. And there was some debate about him being there. Oh, nice pass. Goodness, Kieran. Kayo Tete, thank you for the eight months. Wow. Thank you for supporting the stream, Kayo Tete. Enjoy your bacon and your emotes. Enjoy your continued lack of ads. And you've got a Twitch child to look forward to next month. So I got to gotta start saving for the alimony there. That looked like a highlight. So very happy at when that ended. Okay, Regevich has the ball now. Vandeven. God, Mickey. We have the paciest left side of the field right now with McIntosh and Vandevin. They are so fast. Play wide. There you go. Fast. No, oh, what a terrible touch. Oh.
Are we still in the Hardest Geezers playlist? No, 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 no. This is a different playlist today. But we did spend two days listening to the Hardest Geezers playlist, and we listened to, like, 9% of it, which is wild. Longest playlist I've ever seen. It's like a 93 hours was his running playlist, which I get it. I thought he's saying it mass to troll the viewers. No, I, he was a saint, dude. That dude won so many trophies, starting all like every single one. Aye, Regevich. We really need to turn this dominance into more goals. Have I seen my XG? Why? Why did you tell me that? Why did you tell me to look? Four. Point five one. Dynamo Lins, thank you for the eight months. I appreciate you throwing those Bezos bucks around. We don't need Jeffy B to have any of the, any more of that cash. Conwar, thank you so much for the ten months as well. We have four point five one XG, and it is one nil. I've got a guy with a goal who is on, and I am not joking, a six point seven. Thank you, Kieran Tall. Good pass. Good look. Good step by Hato. Get this going quick now. Chance to counter off that turnover. Indrik. Rico. Festi is LA. Oh, my. Ah, can we get five? Do I hear five XG? Do I hear five? Oh my goodness. What a recovery by Vandevin. What a block by Jarrell Hato. That was Anasio, actually. No, that was Jarrell Hato. Okay. I see FM has gone with the light skin uh, approach for Jarrell Hato. Aye. Oh, stupid flat passes. Middle, now middle. Thank you. All right, Rico, let's play a sharp ball this time. Thank you. Oh, good job putting some pace in the attack there with that first time ball. Regevich, undone by his first touch, which is the only thing in his arsenal that can undo him. Oh, that's mine. You are not running by Jarrell Hato. Thank you very much. Oh, good confident passing from Gongsted. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Look out, world. Here comes Bellarmino. Seca, baby. All the way home. What a goal by Bellamino Seca in the number 20. What a supreme player he is. Delivering the goods in the semi-final of the League Cup. A very deserved second goal. Now it's going to be a tall task at the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for Nottingham Forest. A third goal would make it nearly impossible. Here's Kieran Tull. It's McIntosh. It's Hendrick. Why 
is that? It's so open. And then you just pass it to a dude who's like actually being defended. Oh, I thought they just gave me a pen. What the hell? All right, Seca, Radjevic, maybe a highlight, hopefully. Now, neither of those guys could find a particularly aggressive pass, and now we've got Ebisele hitting it all the way back to the keeper. Ooh, uh, the work rate on Bellarmino Seca is crazy. That dude never stops moving. And he's there again, and he's got Mac, and this might actually be a highlight. actually had one XG. It just doesn't look like it. All righty. We definitely, we had over five on the graph, over five on the match stats. We, um, yeah, we had a pretty good game there. We really should have been scoring more. Kieran Tell should have had like a hat trick. Man finished on a 6.7 with a goal. That is the lowest I've ever seen. No penalty involved. Hey, Gamera just got sent off. Nice. Hey, Chelsea could lose. That would be sick. They just drew that match nil-nil. All right, um, I want to see if I can throw a two days of rest on Bellarmino Seca and kind of get him back for this league match. I'm going to do the same with Endrick. Uh, and I'm going to do the same with Jarrell Hato and Rico Lewis. I'd love to have the, our, our full first team on the field for this match. Cause I'm not really that I would love to play the backups in the league cup. I'm gonna keep it a I'm gonna keep it a stack. I would love to play the backups in the League Cup semifinal second leg. I'd love to be able to scrape some starters together. Wow, everybody's going for Cabela Moka winner now. Okay. Uh first attempt didn't work. I'm going back in, chat. I'm going back in. They'll never recognize me. Hello. It's a release clause. We don't care about that. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool. Cool. It wasn't even, uh, sorry. It was me. It was just me the whole time. It's fine. It's whatever. Um, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Eight, that would have been wild if it, you know, if it was already open again, that would have been insane. Right. Would have been crazy if that was already open again. Whatever. Uh, you can't talk to the agent in those situations, uh, unfortunately. Said Red Bull Salzburg were interested apparently in a... I'm going to go down to 50 million and 43 million. That's at least closer to what I was talking about. I wanted at least 60. I'm aware... That's kind of the second straight transfer window. We've been looking around for deals for him that that market just might not be there. I don't feel like, even if I'm patient, that we're going to be able to get that. So I am op I'm down to open up any offers around 40 to 50 million. I realize that is just good value because there is a world where Simone Skoda is being sold for like 80 million and it frustrates me we're not going to be the team to do that. Yeah, I got to get a different wig out, you know? He knows I'm coming. Not good enough look. Really? They say they're saying Nice has 80 million. Improve the quality of the starting eleven? Cool. Put an offer in, man. I, I am down to sell Marcelo Enrique. 
There's a lot of money apparently in Marcelo Enrique, and I think he is—he's not a guy that we could easily replace in our uh, rotation. But there's so much money in him that I'm—I'm I'm willing to entertain the uh, proposition. I'm also willing to entertain a deal for Engley and McAvoy because he's kind of just wasting away on our bench right now. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna miss the match focus and the team bonding, all those guys that we rested. But you're really not missing a lot. I mean, this is from away at Nottingham Forest to away at Wolves. That's what we got going. I have my, my save these really good players never appear in my scouting. Well, okay, so that scouting is actually just keeping uh like keeping me up to date. So I have certain scouting reports that uh will give me Okay, I'm not in my recommendation thing, am I? That I have like this one that will just keep reminding me of players that we already know about. I also have uh multiple short lists, like tiers of short lists that um are being kept up to date by my my scouting department so loans in 294 players this short list we've got 189 players on um and actually get rid of that short list delete the dual nat short list um default short list is just for stupid stuff that we don't care about it's just like the basic one that people get thrown on to. End of contract. Of course, targets is where I do my shopping. These are the guys that are financially and ability-wise good looks for our team. And that's why I do a lot of my shopping on that one particular short list. Now, it takes a long time in a saver with a club, you know, in this case, you know, kind of a year and a half to get to a point where I'm comfortable going, yeah, the guys that we would want to sign are on that short list. We also have a scouting department of literally 31 dudes. So... Yeah, we are able to work incredibly quickly and keep all of those very large short lists up to date, right? If you have a scouting department of six people, United just lost. United just lost, which means we have a match in hand and uh, two matches in hand and a three-point lead. We have a match in hand and a nine-point lead on Man City. We say nothing. We say nothing. You know why? Because we freaking bottled it last year. That's why. We say nothing. Say nothing. Say nothing. I want the leadership of Gera in that second leg. Uh, so I'm going to start Janis Radjevic in this match. But I don't think I've got any other adjustments. Obviously, we're working on getting George Sakichi back up to full match sharpness. I'd love for him to play a full 90 in this game. Um... Although we, uh, apparently he's supposed to still be monitored, you know, whatever that means. Absolutely preposterous. Ridiculous. All right, so Rosales is back. Uh, Marcelo Enrique coming in there, and then Coyote in for Festia Bozzelle. And then we are going to do a pretty full rotation for our home match against Nottingham Forest with a multi-goal lead. That's something I feel like we should be able to hang on to. Now, Mujahid Kaya is going to start over Kieran Tall. After Kieran Tall's absolutely abysmal and shocking and horrifying and not safe for children performance that he put on the last time he was on the field. So, away against Wolves. <sighs> first year's rough. Yeah, dude, the first year's my least favorite year of, his, of, of any save. First year with the team's the toughest year. Have I won the Champions League? Dude, no, we've won one Europa League. This is our second full year at the helm of Tottenham, and we have built an absolute beast. And we are trying to keep it rolling right now. We are trying to keep it rolling. Say nothing, score more. Exactly. We see what the table looks like, but you know what? 48 points is a hell of a long way from the 90 it's probably going to take to win the league. So we got to go out there and get those points. Those points aren't going to get themselves... Right now, we have 48 points. That's all we have. Hey, move it. Move the boy. Yes, thank you, Radjevic. Oh, that would have been pretty, but no. Two games in hand at the top. What did, you, what did I say? What did I say? We say nothing. We all see it. 
We all see the you know, United just lost to Leeds away. But you know what? There is a very long season, the business end, as it were, of the entire season that is yet to be played. Why are you sending it on Stansfield when I specifically requested you not to send it on Stansfield? I pointed to that man and I said, that man is Stansfield. Go nowhere near him. And yet there you are. Oh, McNuggets. Get out of here. Ooh, that was offside. Oh, please don't be. It is. Dang it. Oh, but that was such a good hit. Is that Scott McTominay? Yes, it is. For mid-table Wolves. Be greatest striker in the history of United right there, Scott McTominay. Look, that's not a country mile, all right? He was offside. He was undoubtedly offside, but he was not offside by a country mile. Yeah, all right. Sick, dude. <laughs> ref, no! Then the ref looked me dead in my eye sockets and my windows to the soul, and he said, yes. And we are down 1-0 on the road. That is not where you want to be. Oh, boy -o. All right. Come on, you Spurs! Oh, that's my ball. Uh, let's go. Bellarmino Seca. It's what he does. He makes plays. It's Mujahid Kaya. Hendrick. Why? Yes. Need a response. I need the world-class winger that we had last season, the winger that we know George Shakichi can be. Just those little muscle injuries have robbed him of consistency this season. Has not been at match sharpness in months, like full match sharpness. A lot of McIntyre. He was, I mean, he was out for a month with, I believe, an injury and then a couple of nagging injuries in his recovery. It's not been the best time for my boy. Just not where you want to be. Handed them the goal with a foul. I mean, to be fair, if Rico doesn't come up and play him, it's probably a goal anyways, but... We let freaking Wolves wear us down. Let's go. Middle. Oh, come on, lads. Come on, lads. Good. Use that. Be a dribbly boy. George definitely seems to be awake today. That's progress. Glad we could get him off of my, uh, you know, can't think of a single mattress company, so we're just going to drop it. Serta? What's the Tempur-Pedic? Thank you. That's a, uh, yeah, got off that new Tempur-Pedic. Boom. Nailed that joke. Yes. Come on. Good. Force the stupid long ball to nobody. Rodriguez! Dang it! You're like the Empire State Building, man. Win the header. Burj Khalifa in the midfield, and he just... Oh, my God.
I had a huge uh, dilemma where I won a new challenge in my, uh, my save after winning everything with Brighton, but I'm too attached to my squad and the Wonder Kids I've developed. Well, you only need a new challenge if you aren't enjoying what you're doing. If you're enjoying playing and winning everything and continuing to develop those Wonder Kids, then do that. You know, you don't, but if you have the feeling that like you're not having fun anymore, you're just struggling to say goodbye to the Wonder Kids, then that's that's different. And uh, just start it. You know, you can start a new save in the same universe if you want to. Try and buy a couple of them. Like start to create a new manager and go to a different team somewhere. Oh yes, there we go. Immediate response from Mujahid Kaya. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Excellent, excellent delivery. Oh, this is a nasty cross by Mickey Vandevin to Mujahid Kaya. Keeper gets caught out there. Mujahid Kaya absolutely sent it to get on the end of that ball. At least I have one good striker. Looking at you, Kieran. Oh, no. Oh, thank you. Come on, guys. Let's get that goal before the half, you know? Let's just uh, let's find that chance right before the half here. Now that we've cut this to a hole, Mark, that's not good. That's not good. Mark Rodriguez is down and out. We will emotionally process that later. Mark Rodriguez is hurt. Uh, you've been terrible so far. I feel like everybody should acknowledge that, and then we can just kind of move on. You guys have sucked massive Easter-sized eggs so far. Now, you know kind of what we are probably going to do here. We are going to pinch in on the wings, and we are going to play with more aggression at the front of this formation. We are going to raise the tempo, and uh, we're going to keep that directness at the shorter part of it. We are going to play with a deep-lying playmaker so that he's able to find the ball. And we want Bellarmino, Seca, and Regevich, and they're amazing playmaking ability to kind of be in that position this is a uh, tactic that's worked very well for us in the past and down a goal coming out of the half it is exactly what i feel like we need to keep them pinned in their end a little bit more make the dream work for us shigichi excellent touch man Their counter outlet was Cunha. I've changed the way their strikers are presenting, so definitely need to switch up the way our center backs are defending in that spot. Okay. Let's get a little control over this match, please, because we are not winning the match momentum right now, and we are certainly not creating much. All right, Radjevic. Hendrick. Okay, I mean, according to the laws of physics, I believe what you were attempting to do is impossible because there were not one but two dudes in front of you. But you know what? Whatever. Ooh, Rico Lewis. Staying dedicated to the bit up there. Javi Guerra. Bellarmino Seca. Yep, that's just not what I want. I don't want that at all. Don't want any part of that, actually. Kind of wild how little I want that. I am incredibly sad right now because we are doing nothing. Like, literally nothing is happening. Um, okay, Bellarmino Seca is going to come off for Luz, or for Kazu Kanda, who's going to become a shadow striker. Uh, who else is somebody that we could grab? Uh, well, up until literally this game, but I uh, it's good to see you, Paul. Thank you for the year. <laughs> Enjoy your golden bacon, dude. But it, it was going well up into this exact game. Uh, Vandeman is tired, but he's playing well, so we'll let him keep doing that. Uh, all right, Kazu Kanda, Paul McIntosh. We could also go with Lucy Uz, and then that gets uh, Kazu Kanda out on the outside. I think we'll we'll do that. All right, guys, we need to literally create anything here. I am open to...
is there's nothing happening. There is absolutely nothing happening in this match, and that is the, you know, we went after this early, too. We have gotten incredibly offensive very early, and it has done absolutely nothing. We have produced absolutely nothing from that. So I'm going to go get Regevich off, and we are going to play the old two-striker mambo-jambo. We're actually, we're going to go to this tall and Kaya, and Kaya is going to be there. We want the winger on that side so he can play it to Kieran Tall. Uh, Lucius is going to be a center mid on attack. Kind of coming into that area. Uh, and you guys are going to be up on the wings. We are not going to drop our wing pressure. Let's just make sure we have all the stuff on that we want. Already have enough width, especially with the winger out there. We're going to just step up more. Trust you. You don't care. Kieran! Let's go, Kieran! I don't know why you're super anxious. You're not somebody that's had mentality issues in the past, but I will cure them with an encouraged shout. Well, I mean, the whole second half has passed without us getting a meaningful highlight, which is so incredibly disappointing, considering the fact that we have played the entire second half in just an unbelievable send-it tactic. And we still weren't able to create anything, so that's just a real indictment of where our mentality is at. Uh, that that we're nervous or we're, yeah, I'm not. I'm not having a good time right now. Oh my goodness, that is such an unnecessarily uh, like giveaway in that spot. Thank you, Rico. Okay, we, uh, I mean, like, what even is going on? I feel like if I was watching the full match, I would have put my forehead through the literal, mo like, through the monitor. Because what is that pass? My right wing's not even looking. It's just lobbed into a space that their left back then steps into, and now all of a sudden they're going again. Nobody's even near McTominay in that play. Like, it's just wide open, and then we miss that. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, it's just an unbelievably disappointing match. Like that, even that, that pass is so bad from Inacio. That is so bad. Nothing. We didn't deserve a single thing. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Completely unacceptable loss. Oh, shut up! Your legs are made of jello! God! All right, come on, walk that offer up on Simone Skoda, please. Walk that offer up to $50 million. I Nice, I know you have the money. You just got rumored around one of my other players for a lot of cash. Wow, that was uh, a stunning blip and that we did not deserve to get anything from that, and we were really bad, and we looked nervous. We had a lot of different players that were struggling with their mentality in that game. At least Kazu Kanda is showing some improvement. He didn't do diddly squat after he came in. That's the worst that tactical adjustments ever looked. Also, making that change early. Being aggressive has been really good for us recently, but it's not like it hurt us. It's just like we didn't create anything. We literally did not create a single thing. Well, uh, we're looking to increase their homegrown quota. I'll put them on the transfer list. $30 million. Uh, 35 million. We'll see if anybody stays interested in him for 35 million. That would be a steal. That can be our starting point for the price. I don't think, I don't think anybody's going to want to give me that money, but whatever. What league is Forrest in? Uh, they're in the Prem. They are in the Prem. We have a 2-0 advantage going into the second leg here. Uh, our plan is to rotate and then get the starters on the field against Everton so we can get back in the win column in the league. 
I hate losing league matches, dude. We started this stream beating Man City 3-0 in the league. That was... Man, we got the freaking first team on the field, too. The only explanation is I put too much pressure on them. Maybe. Like, going into that game by saying that they were supposed to win on the road against a mid-table team. That was far too much expectation. But they were, they were, they were freaking out. We had some guys that were nervous that I didn't know were nerves, vulnerability problems in our team. That was bad. That was bad. Moomin, thank you so much for the prime, though. Thank you for supporting the stream with $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. What jersey am I wearing? Great question. I am. I actually don't know. It's from our uh, jersey sponsor, Singalo. Like the people that sponsor the channel and the streams and everything. And this is one they just sent me. Just like, uh, so being new arrivals. It is Stallion Laguna. That's my, okay, you know, we'll, I'll do a turn. I'm not above it. I'll do a turn. All right. We'll stand up. I'll do a turn for you. Stallion Laguna from the Philippines. Pretty sweet. Like I say, they've got a bright pink one. I don't know why they didn't think I would look great in that. I would look fantastic in that. But they've sent me the, like, faded pink one. I uh, Yeah, I'll do it. I'll give you a little twirl. Yeah, you're welcome. They sent me, So they've got a bright... There's a bright pink one as well from Stallion Laguna. But, uh, yeah, they, they sent... I, I would look great in this. Tell me I wouldn't look great in that. But they, they sent me the, like, you know pink hued one which uh you know that's solid i can work with that but uh, if, if you I, I guess i've talked about them on stream in a while if you uh are not familiar with singalo they basically partner with smaller clubs around the world like stallion laguna fc for the philippines uh to give people like me that love cool jerseys like access to them basically and the money also you know it goes to the clubs as well so it helps uh create merchandising income for these clubs that have uh you know, really sick shirts, like whether it's Zomon. Oh, dude, look at Ho Chi Minh City second kit. Oh, they sent me this one, dude. I'm going to see. I'm going to be like, hey, can you can you send me the other Ho Chi Minh City one? <laughs> that is that's nasty. But they're part like there are clubs all over the world. Like, I, I think that maybe the coolest story on one is this is from Bhutan. Paro FC is a club in Bhutan and they've got the. The Drug Asia sponsor and everything. It's a cool kit. Cool company. Based out of New York, actually. So check out Singalo exclamation point kits if you want to grab uh if you want to grab any of those kits. Because they're very cool. They're from all over the world. And I swear to you, the only time people ask me what kit I'm wearing on stream is when I'm wearing one of the Singalo uh kits. They're bangers. Are there ISL teams? Uh, is that Indian Super League? Yeah, there are. There's, uh, I have one of them. Uh, we, we use one of them as like one of the things that we promoted in a video. They have, hi they had Hyderabad. They might be done with Hyderabad. You might have missed the boat on Hyderabad. Snooze, you lose, man. I don't, I, I don't know if they have an Indian Super League team anymore because they had Hyderabad. Gaylong is Singapore. Ezra's not Singapore, right? No, that's Laos. Duh. Gotta know that. Highlanders FC Zimbabwe, if I remember right. Yes. Highlanders. Thierry Henry's on the move. He's headed to Vitoria in the second division of uh, Brazil. Nice. Grajan Shiznowski. Shiznowski. That is a sick name. And only two million is a pretty good deal. Jan Benda. Okay. Transfers are happening, but I'm not partaking because we're saving our money for Dominic Pavlok. Because we want and need Dominic Pavlok. I gotta get one of the Pacific FC kits. Where's the Pacific FC one? Are they is that just like a cool kit that's not part of their stuff? Well, then where is it? 
Suffolk FC is Canadian. Is that the that's a cool kit. I love a collared kit. I'm not like a huge kit collector, but I do love kits with uh with collars on them. They're bangers, man. Do do do. Chucky, thank you for the prime, dude. Thank you for the 29 months. And Slicks, thank you for the prime as well. You guys just spent $10 of Jeff Bezos' money. Look at you go. I appreciate you guys. Uh, there's second to, uh, secondary kits. Specific FC. Oh, I love First Nation uh, vibes, like jerseys and stuff. Oh, that is so, dude. I'm not a kit guy, and that is nasty. Dude, the Northwest, like the, the totem pole Northwest First Nations vibe, that, the, that is so good. That is sick. Pacific FC, call me, bro. Uh, call me. That goes so hard. Oh, dude, that is, oh, I need to, I'm just stare at that a little more. Because for those that don't know, like, obviously growing up in the U.S., we kind of learned this stuff, but totem poles were almost exclusively to the native peoples that grew up in the northwest of the U.S., which is where, like, Pacific FC would be, obviously, as well, um, is that kind of cultural group of Native Americans. And so this is, like, very period for where they are. You know, it's very local culturally, and the to they capture the totem pole vibe, and they basically put, like, the logo in the eyes of the totem pole. Oh, that's so good. That, oh, yo, oh, oh. Is it hot in here, or is that just me? That's, that's a good, that's a good kit, dude. That's a really good kit. That is a really good kit. What have we won? We won the Europa League. Um, we won the Europa League in our first half season in charge of the club. So we did break the trophy curse, but then we bottled a treble spectacularly last season. So we kind of brought it back and we're looking to dispel it once and for all. Um, we do have Nottingham Forest second leg of the League Cup semifinal. So this is a big deal. This match right here is a big deal. Alrighty. We are going to rotate a little bit. That means Kieran Tall is going to be in. Uh, Bellarmino Seca wants to play like every match right now. Uh, he's, he's our superstar, so I kind of want to put him out there, but I also want to give Belshior Canelio. Because Belshior Canelio, not a joke, my staff believes he has world-class potential. And I want to continue to kind of tap into that because he is 22 years old, so the guy needs minutes. And he is already good. He's obviously not as good as Bellarmino Seca, but. All right, I said I wanted the leadership of Javi Guerra. I'm going to get that out there. What was Rodriguez's injury? I didn't even look. I skipped it. I was too preoccupied with all the kits. Nick the Bull, thank you for the 41 months. Goodness gracious. Tiny Force, thank you for the 10 months as well. I appreciate you supporting the stream. But Nick, my, wow, that's a while. I really appreciate it. Pacific FC is my hometown team. Those games are fun. That, I mean, the, the kits are sick, too. That's, yeah. What are we won with the curse Tottenham? I already answered that question. I don't know why I read that again, but, you know, nice. We need more kits to try to experiment and do cool stuff like that, not just the basic solids of the same color. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. You got to go for it. You got to give it the old college try, you know? All righty, KO Day is getting the start. We are also launching Gonzalo Inacio into the sun. Oh, Ben El Hajaj is not able to play in the League Cup because he is cup tied. That continues to annoy me until the end of time. All right, I'm definitely going to get Mickey Vandevin to make sure he's available for the next match. And Marcelo Enrique is going to start at the other center back position, so... Careful out there. Marcelo Enrique is at center back today, so we don't have the best back line ever assembled. Uh, I am going to go with Lucius to play in that center mid position next to Javi Guerra. Endrick, dude, usually can play like every match, but I want Kazu Kanda to kind of get the experience. George Shakichi is off for Paul McIntosh. We got to trust our rotations here. 
Got to trust our rotations. We got that Premier League match coming up. We got no reason to get too fancy here. Uh, no reason to get too fancy here. And Smarties, thank you for the 15 months. Shoot. Love you too, dude. Up the freaking hammers. Oh, is this Frank Ocean? Just kind of letting uh, Spotify pick the jams based off a of vibe today. Frank Ocean's the guy that's got really, like, has a ton of stage fright and anxiety and just tries to disguise it by being, like, a mysterious artist. That dude's definitely just terrified of performing. All right. Here we go. Let's ride. Glory or death, gentlemen. Glory. All the best out there tonight. Have fun. I'm going to hit a wall of I have faith in yous. 2-0 lead coming home against Nottingham Forest in the League Cup semifinal. We have got to be able to take care of the business here. Schmiebert, thank you for the 11 months. I appreciate it. Thank you for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money and enjoy that lack of ads. Enjoy your golden bacon next month, too. Shells, what we do is we actually, uh, when we sign somebody like George Shikichi, who's got a really confusing name, we actually type it into Google Translate. Like, we figure out what language it's being said in and then type it into Google Translate and then try and say it like that. And then consult chat. In George Sakichi's chase, he is Kosovan and German, but the name is obviously Kosovan. They speak Albanian there. So we uh, consulted our local Albanians in the Hammers and consulted Google Translate's pronunciation, and we came out with George Jakichi. Chago, thank you so much for the prime, brother. Thanks for being a part of the stream and a part of the Hammers. And thanks for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. Here's a fancy goal for your trouble. Kazu Kanda, Belshior Canelio, McIntosh. Mm, dang it. Is this dude's name Zyke? Olivier Zyke. Zeke? I'd prefer Zuck, but, you know, whatever, whatever works, man. Caesar, thank you for the four months and the prime. You're the sole reason for my now addiction to this game. You're so welcome, dude. <laughs> my, my apologies and condolences to your loved ones, but you are so welcome. Was this roses? Oh, take me back to college. This is roses. Olivier Zyke. Oh, Rosales. There we go. Kieran Tall. Oh, Kazu Kanda. King Kazu. Oh, I mean, it was a pretty good looking play overall, though. I, I don't mind that. Just didn't get quite enough loft. Needed a nice pitching wedge on Masters weekend. Oh, good step. Lucius. Oh, dang. Oh, let's go. Kazu Kanda. Javiera. Oh. Oh, let's go. Ref said no foul. It's not a foul. Canelio. <laughs> Lucius. Miguel Lucius. Oh. Did I hear about OJ? Oh, yeah. He died, like, right before we started the stream. I just didn't encourage my entire team hates me. So how's your day going? <laughs> nice. Canelio. What are we doing? Oh, doing. Oh. I actually discovered Zealand through his takes. They are hilarious. Oh, dude, you're from Zealandism? That is the first time I, that I have ever met somebody on the internet or in real life that says that they uh, that they discovered me through uh, Zealandism, if that's what you're talking about. That's awesome. I freaking love Zealandism. I, that, doing that stuff is so fun. Do like, oh, come on. Oh. Look at live score. Okay, fine. What's going on? What? Dude, you're hilarious. I will take that. Thank you. I appreciate that. We actually, we accidentally live streamed the uh, recording of one Zealandism in the middle of the night one time. 
Sounds like a weird cult. Thank you. That means a lot. Zealandism is my passion. Isn't that still the banner of the Zealandism channel? What YouTube am I on? Zealandism? Okay. Yes! It is. What a banner, man. Zealandism is my passion. Not graphic design. Zealandism. Sorry, I was reacting to the other thing. That's crazy. Stephanie Jovetich scored. Fenerbahce, what are you doing? This is a competition Fenerbahce can win. And Olympiacos, like if you look at the Greek League, Olympiacos is not leading it. Olympiacos is not at the, they're not even close, I don't think. They're fourth. <laughs> yeah, they're four points off. Right, they've won their last two matches to make it look a little more glamorous. But they're like they're not even. And yet, fourth in the Greek league at the moment, and yet, 3-0 on Fenerbahce in 61 minutes. Also, I love Victoria Pilsen so much. Can we go to can I can I go to Pilsen's page real quick? I love Victoria Pilsen so much. Victoria Pilsen, what did they do in the first round of the knockouts is my question. That's what I want to know. Because Victoria Pilsen in the last round of the knockouts, it was nil-nil, nil-nil. This one nothing is because Pilsen won on penalties. They played a nil-nil 210 minutes in the previous round. Okay, they actually blew out Astana. They beat a... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Wait, did they get... Did they win their group? Oh, Pilsen, you naughty dogs. You filthy animals. They won their group with six. Oh, but they won all of them by like one goal, except for the last one. That was the joke, right? I remember this meme. The memes are coming back to me. That was the joke. That every group stage match, they won by a goal. 1-0 over Dinamo Zagreb. 1-0 over Dinamo Zagreb. 2-1 over Astana. 1-0 over Balkani. Five bucks if you can figure out where that team's from. And then they finally won by multiple goals. They won all six group matches. They went nil-nil, nil-nil with Servette in the round of 16 after skipping the first playoff round because they won their group. So they got like a bye. And now they're in the quarterfinal, and you'll never guess the score. It's nil-nil with Fiorentina. What a team. I am all Victoria Pilsen right now. Mourinho, eat your heart out. Yeah, for real. I am all on board with Victoria Pilsen. I hope they nil-nil their way to the final. They have conceded one goal. Dude, how insane is that? They have conceded one goal in the entire competition. Six group stage matches, two knockout stage matches, and now almost through one half of the quarterfinal. That's epic. That's a Zealandism story right there. If they, if they keep that nil-nil, I will be singing their praises on Zealandism tomorrow. How are we only 12 minutes into this match? Because I got distracted. This message is brought to you by Zealand. Okay. Pass it! It's freaking wide open. Paying that guy a lot of money to score goals. You're not even giving him a chance. All right, Javi Guerra, Marcelo Enrique, vamos a la playa. We can go, dude. Oh, that's Hell's Bells. You know what that means? That means we left the playlist we were on. <laughs> because we are now on uh, my, this is my liked songs. You want to just shuffle my liked songs and see what hits? All right, we'll just shuffle my like songs and see what we land on. I 
Have I seen Ali Koike's amazing goal from last week? No, I have not. Throw it in. What's happening? Oh, you're not in the subsection of the Discord. Never mind. My bad. Oh, okay. We're fine. We're good. We're good. We're fine. We're cool. We're good. We're fine. We're cool. No, we're not. He sailed it. So not fine. Okay, little Salis. Little Salis. Marcelo Enrique. Doig. Macintosh. Oh, Paul Macintosh. Oh, it's Conda. <laughs> it's Canelio. Is this a journeyman? Yes, sir. We started with no badges or uh, playing experience. Uh, we took a job in the second division of South Africa. They're the only team that would hire us. That's not true. Some team in the Indo Indonesian second division wanted us, but I didn't want them, and that's the other half of that contract. Um, and we've managed to climb professionally uh, all the way up to we are now in our second full season managing Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, we do have one trophy, so that's sick. Um, they had not won a trophy in like 30 years by when we got here. Um, we it was, it was the Europa League, though. So we're still hunting Champions League, Premier League. You know, we want to get all the way to the top of the game in this journeyman. We want the Prem. We want the Champions League. We want the FA Cup. Still in all of those things, this is the League Cup semifinal. Uh, second leg, we are up 3-0 on aggregate right now. So that's why I'm feeling so relaxed in a semi. That's uh, what the... What the f I have never seen in my life I've never seen anything like that. Did he side foot this? Dude, what the f I, what, Okay, I'm gonna go get Isaac Newton and have him explain to me how the hell that was possible. It's like I got a grenade on the top of his shoe. Jesus. He did. He Zlatan'd it. That was a very Zlatan goal right there. That Oh, that sucks. Yo! Outside the boot volley from my boy Satriano. Oh, um, the, my like songs are outing me here. That's their first shot of the match, by the way. Of a throw-in. Oh, Belchior. That was a good idea. Belchior Canelio looking for Kazu Kanda. Neil deGrasse Tyson's easier to reach. Nah, no, you got to go through his agent, dude. You can go walk right up to Isaac Newton's grave, man. There's, like, nobody guarding it. It was, like, early 2000s. I'm working out for the middle school basketball team music. Lucius. Oh, that was a slick little play. Oh, McIntosh is in. His wife must be so disappointed. <sighs> play it off, dude. Why? You, come on. There's no velocity on that. Freaking floating it towards the keeper. Come on. Come on. Iceland calling. Hey, Iceland. It's me, New Zealand. How you doing? Ah, uh, oh, hello, Javi Guerra. Little Arabona. Canelio. Okay, cool. My attackers couldn't finish their dinner. I'm gonna starve. Thought I was the old Zealand. I prefer the phrase original, but you know, whatever. Beggars can't be choosers. How many Icelanders are here? I prefer ice men and ice women. <laughs> How about the frozen few? Is Ice Cube an honorary citizen? 
don't know. Important questions. Oh, KO day. Oh my God, he's off. Oh. He's offside. Everybody breathe. Everybody breathe. He is offside. This Seth Triano guy is determined to ruin my day. Utterly determined to ruin my day. All right, Jared Shikichi, you are not playing. Because as bad as these ratings are, there's really nobody on this bench that I'm like, yeah, let's put them in. Uh, why is Kode never match sharp? Is it impossible for him to be match sharp? Like physically impossible for him? Does he have some sort of physical limit, like physical limitation? I don't know about. It'd be great. Are we listening to Stained in 2024? Uh, we are. We shuffled my liked songs, and I am uh, I'm being outed right now in audio form consistently for about four straight minutes. But you know what? This is a banger. It is. One day you come visit Iceland, I welcome you. Yeah, I've been to Iceland uh, four times, I think. I have been to Iceland a lot. Uh, you might be wondering, Zealand, why have you been to Iceland so much? Uh, it's kind of on the way to Europe, actually. So that would be why. Um, I really enjoy Iceland. I have spent... A few days in a cabin on a horse farm in, like, the interior of Iceland. And that's probably the most at peace I've ever been in. I'm usually a pretty restless person, I know, shocking. That's probably the most at peace I've ever been, was in that cabin in that horse farm. I went... I did ride snowmobiles in a glacier there. We were trying to see the northern lights... But then there was a snowstorm, and so that didn't happen. And we were just in a snowstorm on a glacier in Iceland, which was warm. Um, I don't remember what we did. I, we drove the ring road once, spent like actually a good few days and got kind of got stuck into it. Also been there for New Year's, which is really cool. Um... New Year's in Reykjavik is awesome because they, so they, you're not allowed to have fireworks like all year, but then the emergency services in Iceland get a lot of their funding from fireworks sales around New Year's. So they basically just legalize fireworks for a couple of days, but nobody in all of Iceland has any idea how to shoot the dang things. And so it is chaos. And I like, I'm from Florida. I'm familiar with the concept of drunken chaos. It is chaos. There's people like with, you know, like shoot, not Roman candles, like actual big boom fireworks, just poof, bounce, like bouncing them off office buildings in Reykjavik. Like it's like a four day, uh, like explosives orgy that just happens in Reykjavik, right? That's what it is. And, and it, and everybody's buying a ton of fireworks because it's like a charity fundraiser to support the emergency services. So it's a really cool like system and cool cause and whatever. Uh, but it is a wild time. If you ever have the opportunity to be in Reykjavik on New Year's, uh, like that night is ridiculous. Absolutely, utterly absurd. I, th that's my vivid memory. Was this, there was this particularly inebriated individual with a lot of cannons, like the cannon fireworks, and he was just trying to set the angle right with like stones under the cannon launcher where he could bounce it off of the windows of this office building. And he did like it was the fireworks are just going off in crowds of people. Like it was insane. It was either a war zone or Mardi Gras. I couldn't figure out what was going on, but I did have a thoroughly wonderful time. Wait, Fenerbahce scored two? Oh, okay. All right. Okay.
Stacy, dang it! Janet, who's my producer? Who did not set this up? Come on! This is ridiculous! Anyways, welcome to Zealand News. We're doing it live. The reason for our disheveled nature is that uh, crazy things are happening here. Uh, we've got Olympiakos in Fenerbahce, Fenerbahce, showing signs of life in Mount Olympus itself. 2-0 in the last seven minutes to Fenerbahce. It's 3-2 now. Olympiakos with that stunning three-goal lead. It's nearly been erased by good old Fenerbahce. Fred did get a yellow. He will miss the next match. Classic Fred. But... Fenerbahce is on the comeback trail, and we will keep our eyes on it. Meanwhile, our heroes at Victoria Pilsen are managing to keep this bad boy 0-0. Zero, zero. Victoria Pilsen has still only conceded one goal now in nearly nine matches of play in the Europa Conference League. Could the Czech team go all the way? And, of course, a huge day of Europa League is coming up as well, but you can't see that because Janet does not have that graphic ready. Thank you. <clears throat> Who scored? It was um, it was Dusan Tadic and a penalty in Kavechi seven minutes after that. So it was a penalty to grease the skis. You always got to grease the skis. You know, you don't, I mean, you're not, come on, you're not just skiing raw here, all right? You're not just immediately sparking a comeback. You've got to have an incident that sparks the comeback, and the incident that sparked the comeback was a penalty for Tadic. It's a bad omen for what Forrest are about to do. Will you shut up, man? <laughs> We've gone from stained to five hours. I liked songs are hitting. Hitting all the right chords. Festi Ebacele. Okay, well handled by Marcelo Enrique, who's deputized well enough as a center back this time round. Miguel Lucius, Marcelo Enrique, Javiera, Shakichi, ooh, Belchior Canelio, Mushaid Kaya. Man, we are. How is that off? Zico, thank you for the seven months, dude. Appreciate you. Seven months supporting the stream, being a part of the hammers, and spending five dollars of Jeff Bezos's money every single month, dude. You've spent like sixty dollars of Jeff Bezos's money now. That's got to make you feel empowered. And yo, the thirteen months from Master Stitch. How did we not score? I was dancing specifically for the inevitable goal. Stitch, thank you for the 13 months. Harperoni, thank you for the five months, dude. Good evening, Z. Good evening. Uh, what's the highest transfer fee you've received on this game outside of Saudi clubs? Just got 200 million for Jeremy Pino from Man City. Uh, the highest overall fee, he just got sent off. You. It went to the other guy. Ha Don't ask. I won't. I. Uh, uh, How does this go on Kazu Kanda instead of a yellow card on Javi Guerra, like a second yellow? I don't get it. <laughs> they're both fouling the sh They're fouling him so hard, man. And Guerra's on a yellow and Kazu Kanda's not. They're literally both fouling him at the same time. 
And they just gave the yellow to Conda instead of giving a second yellow to Gara. Well, that's super amenable, Jordan. I really appreciate that, Jordan. That is incredible. They're they're both lunging at the exact same time. I didn't even see Kazu. And I saw the card go up and I was like, oh, that's it. That sucks. Javi Guerra just got sent off with a couple minutes left. And it's like, nope, he's fine. Javi Guerra dodging the bullet of bullets. And now he scores. Oh, yes, he does. Javi Guerra scored the goal. Lord is back. Thank you for the 19 months. Big love, dude. Big love, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream for 19 months. Enjoy your continued lack of ads, dude. Enjoy it. Absolute legend. Should have been sent off. Bags a goal. Nottingham Forest is complaining. I don't even hear them. You know? I ran out of Q-tips a few weeks ago. I can't even hear. Right? I'm going to get suckered in by one of those ear cleaning videos on TikTok or something. Can't, can't hear the haters, man. Can't hear them. That's a lie, by the way. I would never do that. Okay, that's, that's heathen behavior. I just did it for the joke. Do you already have any plans for the 2026 World Cup as content or maybe TV work? Uh, very early tentative plans. Well, that sucks. I mean, we're still up two goals on aggregate, but that's just annoying that they're going to get a draw out of this. We better beat Everton at home in the league because that's now two matches without hanging a fat dub on the board. Oh, Miguel Lucius, you got to do some more squats, man. The donk isn't big enough to be throwing out blocks like that. And now Lucius is hurt. What's the injury? Ah, oh, he's got a wounded ass. Hate when that happens. And they're such a valuable animal for hauling cargo as well. Oh, square it! <laughs> I don't know. He, it looked like he just gave up on trying to touch the, like, like how in this situation does Kaya not score? I, I don't know. It's like he gave up on the ball before it had even gone by him. Play the overlap, please. Oh, he should, I mean, God, what a run and delivery by Shikichi. I, I just don't know how that ends up not being great. Oh, Kaode, Kaode, Kaode. Shagichi! Oh. Okay, we do have a corner. We can still get a win on the match day as well. God, Lucy Hughes has been terrible. He's got a 6.2. All right, whatever. Frustrated we gave up a couple of goals, but we got the job done. We are headed to the League Cup final. It's insane they got two goals at a point three, and I got two goals at a three point two nine. What, what? You know what? Whatever. Whatever. Whatever, man. Don't even care. Don't even care. Ah. Yeah, League Cup final. That's what matters the most. We got the job done. We handled the home and away against Nottingham Forest. We navigated it. And we are still alive in all four competitions that we need to be alive in. At least we deserve to win this one. Yeah, yes, that's fair. Unlike the Wolves one. Thank you for reminding me. You are uh, very right. It was a bruised ankle. Come on, man. So fortunately, that Rodriguez injury was not bad. It was just a little tweak of the ankle. Should be back and operational by the end of January. Which is awesome. So Javi Guerra might be missing the League Cup final. He might have a yellow card accumulation suspension for the League Cup final. That, or he might just miss Everton because it's like, oh, it's any FA competition or something. Any technical possession training that we could be doing? I guess, yeah. Oh, we haven't done any technical possession training in a while. Well, I haven't had a full, we haven't had a full week off in a while. So I'll go ahead and swap out some of your offensive training. And then here I'll swap out some of your defensive training. Now are you happy, Mark Rodriguez? Now that we're doing our technical possession training, God, this month sucks. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, God. This month is brutal. Lamine Fall of Benfica. There's always a good Lamine Fall somewhere. Six point two with the own goal is probably an okay game without the own. That's true. I did forget that the own goal went off Lucius. Good to keep that in mind, or being too hard on the kid for dropping a, a generational stinker. Let's see a Federico Valverde. You're still very good. So I uh, I'm gonna go with a little target acquired. You might be you leaving at the end of that contract there, hot shot. Uh, it's he had well he wants 15 to 20 million but he's also very good very well rounded does literally everything could generate nearly 8 million per year in revenue now that's crazy um you know i will at least ask i will see what you want Okay, he is down for squad player, uh, down within an intensive language course, uh, a one-year extension. That's tough, because at 33, it is unlikely that he will be at the level that we need, Then that wage is also massive. I was okay with anything under 20, but... Oh, they locked it. Okay. Um walk away and we will come back in a month how's that sound should have should have locked it off i don't know what i was doing but i definitely don't want to have him for two years it would be a one year hand the reins over to a new generation in the midfield move but look if you can get a guy with that much talent and that much leadership capability that will also make you nearly eight million per year in revenue just from his existing, you can get him for free. Hard, hard to get me to not do that, honestly. Very hard to get me to not do that. I see, what are your camera settings? Like in-game, sideline with the height all the way down. I uh, On stream, that is in a, a Sony A5100 right there. You guys, right, right here. I get carried away now, come on. Have I got the German guy? No, we uh, we botched the contract negotiation. Uh, is he going for the 6-5 German lead striker? Pavlok? That's a red ref. Oh, come on. Game's gone. Then now you can see predicted merch income from a player. You can only see it when it's like, come on, Vandevin, damaged heel. That's not even a real thing. <laughs> that is definitely a made-up injury. Uh, Hopefully he'll only miss two matches. We've got Everton... Then we're going to rotate as much as humanly possible for Galatasaray. Obviously, in Champions League matches, that's hard to do because the registration's a little more confined than your average league match, but that's our goal. We're still, uh, there's no way this dude's name is Niels Nielsen. That is hilarious. Niels Nielsen, under a bid from AZ Feyenoord in Nice, where he will become immeasurably more expensive. Uh, but yeah, we're we're not interested in competing for Niels Nielsen's signature. Okay. <sighs> Neil, son of Neil, fourth of his name. <laughs> like, wow, that's a lot of Neils. Okay. All right, Joel Hato. Gonzalo Inacio, after a week off of training and playing, should definitely be okay to go. I'll be very frustrated with him if he's not. 
Um, Kieran Tall, you are definitely not in the type of form I like right now. Samucha Kaya is going to get the start. Jordan Shikichi, so close to having worked his way all the way back to match sharpness. It would be wonderful if he could actually get there. He's right next to it. He can see the glorious horizon. All right, Javi Guerra is like actually cleared. Mark Rodriguez is still not fit either, so we'll just go ahead and run Javi Guerra. I guess he will just miss the League Cup final. That sucks. I am going to have to try to remember that. I'm counting on you guys. When we get to the League Cup final, somebody's got to remind me that Javi Guerra is not able to play in it, so I don't rotate, assuming he will be there. Do you understand, gentlemen and ladies of the chat? Fisher, thank you for the 37 months. <laughs> but think of the Nielsen ratings for his games. Sure, all he has to do is talk to his uncle to get the Nielsen ratings bumped up, and now all of a sudden everybody's super into it. Wow, Everton. Bold today, aren't we? Goodness gracious. The 8-2 formation? My least favorite of all the formations. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and we are going to start in this tactic. I am going to start with my fullbacks up because I would like very much to keep them in their half of the field and having our fullbacks up allows us to step up and kind of close down their outlets on the outside more. Doesn't give them as much space for those wingbacks to float around freely. We can meet them further up the field and make their life incredibly difficult. And that's my goal. I want pain and suffering. All right, Gary, you're starting, right? Yeah, we're cool with that. And Regevich, Mr. New World Class Player, we're all good with that? All right, cool, let's do this. Let's ride, brother! Premier League at home against Everton. Uh, relax. We were freaking out in our last match, and we lost just our third match of the entire season in the Prem at Wolves 2-1, to one, which was super disappointing. But Fisher, that's a very long time. I really do appreciate it. It was a long time to be supporting the channel. That would require you to look at chat while choosing a lineup. Uh, true. I, I understand the issue that I might have created there. Why is a player aggressive before the match? He has really high aggression, and they just start the match aggressive ready to get stuck into it. It's quite fun, actually. Abdullah, really? During Aid, you... Uh. That's that high aggression? Yes, it's Abdullah getting a uh, yellow card in like two minutes. He's fine. No, he's not. He's ruined forever. <laughs> Crunched Indrik. Dude, Rico and Jarrell Hato already have yellows. I hate it here. Let's not. It's half my defense on yellow card inside 10 minutes. Oy, that took a deflection. Uncomfy for Gongstead. Hey, Castrix, hope you had a good stream, dude. Thanks for joining in. Thank you, Casper. Now, let's get back to comfortably winning league matches like the bosses we are. Everybody cool with that? Whole right side of my defense on a yellow for the entire match? No biggie. Hendrick? Oh, pretty. Pretty crossfield. Oh, there we go. KO day. Oh, that's Bellarmino Seca. You know, what if we didn't? Inside. Play him. Chigichi. One more. One more. 
More! <laughs> it was there. We just, we, we've got to be quick with those passes once we're kind of like through the first line because they're just going to collapse in on us like a falling building because there's so many guys back. Oh my goodness. They timed that up perfectly and we are fortunate we're not losing. That was an exquisite counter into the space and Everton is playing the type of game it wants to play right now, honestly. Oh, it's in! There we go! He broke in through on an own goal. I have a sneaking suspicion. All right. A sneaking suspicion this is a horrific own goal. I don't think there's anything that Ward can do here. The ball is kind of flying right at him. It hits the hands of Valdemarsen, and Ward is just trying to flick it away and kind of get out of the way, and he ends up flicking it into his own net. But, you know, not fully his fault. Definitely an unlucky own goal where his keeper kind of saved it right into his face. I mean, just straight off his face. But that's good, yes. I don't like the new Champions League format. Uh, I, I kind of like it. I think it's more fair. Every team gets two teams from each pot to play against. So, like, previously, pot one teams um, would never play against another pot one team. You know what I mean? Because they would be the ones that were, like... So it, it creates better matchups between top teams in the league stage, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and it puts more teams into the knockouts, which I think is a lot of fun. 24 instead of 16. So I also like the fact that there's no drop downs. Like if you're in the Champions League, you're in the Champions League. If you're in the Europa League, you're in the Europa League. I like that. The drop downs were always a little weird to me. It was always like once you got to the knockouts, oh, the big boys are in town now, you know, in the Europa League, all these teams that were just narrowly missing the Champions League knockouts just spawn in in the knockout round of the Europa League. Uh, so I, I like those aspects of it. The two more matches is definitely annoying. Like it clutters the hell out of January, but... Uh, things are going well because we're winning, but I know you're capable of much better than what we just saw in that first half, so please try to deliver it. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, don't like that touch. That scared me. Oh, we've got both of their center backs on uh, yellows, or that left side of their defense, I think, on yellows. Muniz and Atichi. Oh, no, that's two other three center backs, Abdullah and uh, Muniz. Okay. Hey, speaking of Iceland, we've got Valdemarsen hanging out back there. Full time in the Conference League. So it stayed 3-2. All right, but Fenerbahce can overturn that in Turkey. That is a huge couple of goals on the road. Because that is, you can now, like, if you're down one goal, that is way easier to overturn. Also, Pilsen's still going, baby. Nine matches, one goal allowed. And Pilsen continue to frustrate Fiorentina into Czech, in the Czech Republic, and now it comes down to one match, which is exactly what they would have been hoping for, dude. Literally exactly what they would have been hoping for. Couldn't have dreamt up a better situation for them. They go in, they're on the road, a lot of pressure on Fiorentina to perform in front of the home fans. And every second that ticks by that Fiorentina hasn't scored yet, the anxiety grows. Uh, okay, KO day. Oh, oh it's in, what? It's an absolutely absurd goal from Harvey Guerra. A ridiculous skipping deflection in the rain that has gone all the way in and by Valdemarset. It is a fortunate day at the park for Tottenham Hotspur to get themselves back on track in the league. An own goal and a heavy deflection to find their way through an obstinate Everton. 
All right, we're there. Gonzalo Inacio, yay, Regevich. You can hit a dime literally anywhere. That works for me. Oh, George Shikichi. May I have this dance? Use that 20 agility. Glide. Glide, George. Is the quadruple still on? Yes, we are into the League Cup final, which was the only thing that was really putting the quadruple in jeopardy at this point. We are into the League Cup final. I didn't see who we were playing, I, so I don't know that. Well, I am going to get Guerra because he was not ready for a full 90 minutes out there. We do have Champions League coming up against Galatasaray, but we are, of course, already guaranteed through, so I'm not married. Yeah, we're rotating as much as we can reasonably in the Champions League. George Shikichi, all right, that's a corner. I'm watching without sound as I'm in the library. Can you say hi? Nailed it. All right, anybody else? Dragon, Bellarmino, Seca. <laughs> the number of cards we have. Oh, God. I'll get Jarrell Hato for Rosales. Hato's had that yellow since the second minute. Regevich is also playing terribly. I'm just going to get Kazu Kanda in for the fun of it. Um, and Belshior Canelio is going to come in. And Kieran Tell. You know, honestly, we might as well just... Uh, Keep those rotations going. We're up 2-0. I'm feeling comfortable with it. They haven't changed their formation. They're not coming out to play to try and take the game to us, so we'll just keep them pinned in their half of the field and live our life, you know? We're just going to live our life. Squeeze them off the ball. Nice play by Coyote. Now we've got Shikichi in behind them. Oh, it's open. Somehow we couldn't get that ball out in front of us, and we bottled that entire fast. Oh, my goodness, Marcelo Enrique! Oh, that is so not his game. That was almost so hot. The man was making some plays. But this is not the enthusiastic win that I was hoping for, but it is also a win, so. Don't need to be too picky, I guess. It's a win, is a win, is a win. Man, we really leave a lot of goals on the table, though. Yes. Yes. Oh, Canelio! Oh, let's go, Inacio. Marcelo Enrique going for Hendrick! Dude, we are so bad at scoring right now. It's all right. We'll get hot by the end here. Oh, oh, oh. Good news. Good news. Everybody shh. Everybody shh. Hello? Hi, I'm looking for uh, Rocky Cooper. That's a new one. Did I get a new name? That's so exciting. I used to be Esteban. <laughs> now I'm Rodney Coker. I, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Did, are you going to ask me if I own a property or is this for something else like more important than Rodney just gave the wrong number? Um, it's definitely for something else. More IT related, it looks like. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. And it um based off the fact that I'm definitely not Rodney, um, he probably needs a lot of help when it comes to IT stuff. So <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so sorry for reaching out. <laughs> thank you though. You're all good. Good luck finding Rodney. Bye. Bye bye. All right, thank you. Bye. Do you know how refreshing it is to talk to another human being and it actually just be like an, uh, an interaction with another human being. 
How refreshing, after all of the, like, robo calls and, like, scam calls that we answer for fun about me being Esteban, like, how nice was that? That was such a human conversation. I was just waiting for her to hang up because, like, she was trying to sell Rodney something. But that was a legitimate, like, I got the wrong number or the wrong number was written down or whatever. Like, just incredibly wholesome. Like, if that girl actually wanted to sell me something, I'd at least be interested in hearing about it even though I'm, I'm not Rodney, because she was like actually a human being. That's the first normal, like, because I get random calls from random numbers all the time because of the, the memes that we've been keeping up with for a long time. But that's probably the first time I've had a completely normal human interaction when answering the phone on one of those. That was wild. Five hundred dollars to whoever finds Rodney. Poor guy wrote the wrong. No, poor guy wrote the wrong phone number down. She was actually uh, coy about what that was about. I thought that was interesting. Wolves just beat Chelsea too. All right, they're not that bad. <laughs> Wolves just beat Chelsea too. They're apparently cooking with the sauce right now. How's the relegation battle going? It's Bristol City, Norwich, and West Brom hanging right next to Nottingham Forest. I see. I see. I see. We are, of course, hanging out up top. Newcastle's vibe and Aston Villa's vibe in Liverpool. Leicester up in seventh. Arsenal all the way down to 10th after firing Pep Guardiola. Oh, this alternate universe. Chelsea or ninth? Ah, well, look, there's still Chelsea. They beat us in the FA Cup final, and they have good players on their team. You'd rather play most, uh, you know, I'd rather play Leicester in seventh than Chelsea in ninth. I think it's where I'm at right now. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm not Rodney, but what if I were? That would have been funny. I should have hit her with that line. I can be, I can be Rodney if you need me to be. That would have been really funny. But no, I, I, the, she, she was very coy about what it was about. It was like more IT related. I'm like. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, yeah, we're like a doctor's office or something trying to Get a hold of this Rodney guy. Who do we have in the EFL Cup final? Very good question. I need to remember to look. Bournemouth have fallen all the way to seventh. Liverpool have battled their way into the top four with a win at Bristol City. Uh, League Cup final, we have unknown. They have not played yet. They, uh, they have not played their match yet. It was nil-nil at Brentford, so it's Brentford at Stamford Bridge. I uh, nil nil to the second leg, but they have not played yet. So that's why we haven't gotten all the news articles about like, yo, <laughs> I inter see, I intercepted some sort of spy call and she played it off like an expert spy as she should, you know, as her training would mandate, got to play that off like an expert spy. Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, Chelsea, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, Chelsea at Wembley. Yeah, that wouldn't be fine. But also the revenge would be nice, you know. The revenge would definitely be nice. We'll try Simone Skoda again. Yeah, I know, but you guys don't want to make any offers. Like, you don't want to make any offers during this window. So, you know, Saudi, if you want Gonzalo Inacio, he's the perfect player for you. He's getting old. You've got a thing for older men, Saudi Arabia. I'm figuring you out. All this anti-gay stuff, you know. <laughs> After all this time, you just have a thing for older men. I can see right through you. You're not getting past me that easily. Not Detective Zealand. It was too obvious. Where? Okay, well done. There we go. Look at that graph right there. Saudi Arabia is a sugar daddy kink. Pass it on. Love that for them, though. Love that for them. Slay. Marcos Valdez. This guy's really good. I say that every time he comes up. I think he's come up multiple times. And I'm like, this guy's really good. He's got the handling. He's got the reflexes. He's got 20 eccentricity, which, like, obviously, who doesn't love 20 eccentricity? 
May? Okay. So he's not somebody they could join until the summer. Uh, okay. Oh, that, what? What? I guess you're not invited to the World Cup in Saudi Arabia. Dude, I just say what I think, and then I hope that I can go to fun matches. Like, I... <laughs> But honestly, I I spent so much time dumping on the World Cup in Qatar, I would be surprised if Saudi Arabia was like, hey, you want to be the new Thogden? But who is this? <laughs> this name, I'm sorry. What's Irish? There it is. All righty. What is this Scrabble board? Uh, Cal Ilfion. So based on my understanding of how Irish names are pronounced, this is probably like Bob, but I don't know how, and they don't have an Irish pronunciation thing on Google Translate. So we're going to copy that. How to say that. All righty. Let's take a gander here. Accent in Ireland. Keelan. That's it. Burn the whole island. Burn it to the ground. There's no shot. We are looking at how to pronounce these name and more confusing names, including Irish names. So stay tuned to the channel to learn more. Two different ways of pronouncing it, depending on the regional accent in Ireland. Keelan. Keelan or Gwilan. That's Keelan. There's an F in it. There is an F. If the guy's name is Keelan, can we not just write Keelan? I'm all for fancy ways to spell names. I know. I'm pro fancy ways to spell names. Keelan. But Ireland, I have had enough. I think you're just making it up. I don't think any of this is real. I don't think any of it is real. I think Ireland's just making it up to make us all have to figure out how to translate random letters into random noises. I think that is what Ireland is doing. Keelan. <laughs> Fine. I will call V. Keelan. I'll just pretend your name is written as Keelan. <laughs> Steve Middleton. I don't get many Steves anymore. Abdul Rahim El Aisa. Nice. Daniel Yanelli of England. Joao Martins. Always love Joao Martins. Like him. It's a nice, uh, nice batch of players we're bringing through here. Fahad El Balawi. Finally, pretty sure that he's not going to develop into somebody that I actually like. Gabriel Escobar. Joao Jalo. 18 passing. Ew, you're not going to catch me turning that down much. Sven Berlin, best name in the game. Martin Sotejek, Antonio Weslam Kofi. 21 year old fullback who has pr some pretty massive holes in this game, but he is definitely the type of guy that if we put on the field with a team of our quality, he would kind of blend in. Chris Brady, that's a very good goalkeeper that's not too expensive. Byron Castillo, you're already playing in Mexico. It's usually a pretty sign that you are washed. <laughs> oh, dang it. All right, Sekiro Ziggy. And it's Chelsea. It's Chelsea at Wembley for the League Cup final. They have beaten Brentford. 80th minute penalty for Santi Jimenez, my former player, to ice it. 
And for the second straight year, we play Chelsea in a cup final. We lost 1-0 in the FA Cup final last year. And if we look at this positively, it is an opportunity for revenge. Um, if we look at this negatively, it is an opportunity to uh, collapse in on ourselves like a dying star and then wallow in the pain to follow. We're going to go with option A if we have the choice. If given the option, I will go with A. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be making any adjustments here, but I appreciate being given the opportunity. Um, anybody that maybe we could unregister just for a hot second? Not really. We're kind of maxed on who we're able to register, so we're just going to keep it as is. And Galatasaray, you are up in the Champions League. How are you doing, Turkey? You guys seem to be having a great time recently. Is Ireland real? Irish spelling is actually really consistent. If you learn the pronunciation rules, as far as I know, it just doesn't make sense for an English speaker. So what are the pronunciation rules that the F does not exist? <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, I respect other cultures and other languages, and that's what makes the world cool. It's just wild that they... Uh, Allegedly are able to get those sounds, allegedly able to get those sounds out of um, out of a, a word that is spelled in such a way, you know? Okay, so we have this match, Stockport, then the Real Sociedad, then three days off, and then we play Leeds at home, and then it's deadline day. So this match, what do we think we want to do? Do we want to go starters... It's not like I got a lot of choices. Mickey Vandevin's also like trying to work his way back into the team here from that old bruised heel thing he's got going. So Rodriguez and Vandevin are going to stay far away from the team. Luca Jash is going to get the start. We do have serious concerns about Inacio's ability to stay fit literally at all ever. Um, so we're going to go ahead and yank him off the field, but... Anybody else that were, like, deathly worried about not being able to play in this game? Uh, I just wanted to get Festi, Ebizele, and Josh Doigan as the fullbacks. We'll go Jarrell Hato and Rosales. We'll switch the sides so that Hato's finally on his dominant foot. Um, we'll start Marcelo Enrique instead of Javi Guerra with Rejevich. Endrick is a little too tired for my taste, so we'll go with Kazu Kanda, but George Shikichi is still working on match sharpness, so we'll go with him. We will try to get Kieran Tall going as a goal scorer. That's basically what we're going to do. My name is Zeeland, and that is my story. Those are my decisions, and they have been made. It's Champions League time. Let's rock and roll. Where doth be the Champions League... Uh Anthem. Right there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know. I don't have a lot of subs. It's kind of uh it's part of the process. Just trying to you know what? You went too early. Can I can I shut you up for a second? I, I sent you way too early. I had a team talk to give. Stay patient. You may now go. It's a Champions League night in London. It's Tottenham Hotspur, who have had an absolutely scintillating Champions League season so far against Galatasaray, who are playing to get themselves into the Champions League knockouts. They've also been brilliant on their standards. They are in 17th in the Champions League at the moment, but Tottenham Hotspur are the only team to have won their first six Champions League matches this season. And they have already guaranteed qualification into the final eight of the Champions League. They are ostensibly playing for pride and $3 million, which I'll take $3 million. That works for me. 
playing to keep their absolutely perfect Champions League form going. Uh, let's go, George. Run, George. Run. Oh. Takes so long to get him sharp. George Shikichi. Minnesota, in it. Thank you so much for the prime, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream with $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. No, it's cool. It's cool. I don't, you know, whatever, man. Oh, oh, uh, uh oh, sick. Awesome. Great. Love that for me. Love that for us. All right. Play there. Yeah. Oh, what's the, where's the spell? Oh, he's going to shoot it. Yeah. Losing at home to Galatasaray in the Champions League. That is what dreams are made of. Even if it's a meaningless Champions League game, I thoroughly plan on winning all eight of my Champions League matches for the first time. Dude, the match has just started. You're telling me Club Brugge is already ahead? Oh, Shikichi. That was good. That was good. We like that. The scores. Yes. Already beating Palk Thessaloniki. Tough day for the Greeks. Olympiakos nearly bottles its 3-0 lead. And Palk, which is the leader of the Greek League, which I learned today, is now losing to Club Brugge. It'd be really cool to have a team from, like, Belgium win the Conference League. That would be really neat. Be nice to get somebody, you know, a club from the not top five leagues to actually win a European trophy. Like, one, one of them. At least one. Would I ever consider trying a salt and chili mini munchbox? I have no idea what that is. But salt and chili sounds good. So I'm a pretty easy guy to please with the uh, in the food department. Oh! Oh, he's about to be sick. Shikichi winding up at the back post. Ay, 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 ay. Well, at least we're dominating the game. You know, I was worried that we weren't the better team. Kichi's dropping a stinker. It's probably because he had that chance. And he missed it. And Kieran Tell continues to have, like, serious handle big game issues. Very, and this isn't even a big game. That's, it's, it's very, very concerning. I am troubled by what I am seeing from old Kieran Tell. It is not good. Tis not good at all. Javi Guerra, you're in for uh, Radjevic for the second half. I don't really care which one of you guys played in that position today, and Radjevic has been bad, so you are in. Encourage attacking. I would like to win this game. We do not want to just spot Galatasaray three points, but that might not be the worst thing in the world, honestly, because that basically locks them into a playoff position. Gives us a chance to maybe play against them in the next round. And they're, a, they're, they're the type of team that I would love to get in the Champions League round to 16. Apologies if I missed it. Do you think soccer play at the end of the Arsenal Bayern should have been a pin? Absolutely not. Anybody that thinks it's a pin is in denial and is, like, against the best interest of the game. Like, it is very, very clear what he's trying to do there. It's very easy in that situation for him to avoid running into Manuel Neuer. I realize the point of a foul is not to, like be in a situation where you have to actively attempt to avoid the opposition you can let yourself get hit but he seeks that out you know he throws himself he throws his leg into him now 
they, they, I, I made a whole Zealandism about it, but basically, you know, you've got to have uh, got to be some officials decision making that goes into making sure that that sort of thing is not rewarded as much to begin with. Nice pass. OK, here we go. Oh, yes. Use that agility. Use that agility. Kieran Tall's coming up short. Well said. Very well said. He used the agility, yeah, but he didn't use it to cross. He used it to shoot into the side netting like an idiot. Oh! Kazu Konda! Oh my goodness, Kazu Konda! With a spectacular volley, Bellamino Seca tees him up, and Kazu Konda, the Japanese wonder boy. Oh my heavens in the Champions League, what a goal! I, George Sakichi, we are working on fitness, and technically this match doesn't matter, so make the make it work, man. Make it work. That's all I'll say. Make it work. Don't really have any subs that we can make here. Um, we could move Kazukanda into the middle. I am just going to make kind of the tactical change here that we like to make. We bring these guys up and uh, put ourselves in this position here. Make sure these guys are... On supports, up the tempo, up the directness. You know, your classic adjustment to go for the win here. Bring in Mushaid Kaya. Shift everybody up the field. Javi Guerra. Ooh. Oh, Guerra. Kaya. Kung Fu Kanda. That was a, look, that was a sick goal. That was a sick goal. Sorry, the auto mod apparently thinks Conda's a bad word. I don't know why. It's the dude's last name. Okay, we're going to take a look at some substitutions. George Shikichi's coming off. Uh, Kazu's moving into the middle. He's going to become a shadow striker, and we're moving Indrik onto the outside. And then I'm going to take a look at our fullback positions, and I am going to go with Coyote as he is going to come in and give us a great display of skill. All right, now that I've undone literally everything that I just did, I want Gera to drop back here and be the playmaker. I want Kazu to step in there. Indrik go there. Macintosh go there. Koda obviously coming in for you right there. Um, that gives us the shadow striker right there with a the playmaker still on the field. And I have Marcelo Enrique just charging into the box. I need a different sub. So Doeg's going there. I am going to bring in Rico Lewis and just have him be a center mid on defend that sets that tempo from that spot. Okay. Everybody cool with that? Go win us the game, man. Go win us the game. Let's go. Let's keep our winning record intact in the Champions League. Let's go. Rico, club captain, Rico Lewis. Definitely was feeling in that. He, he, was, he was feeling it a little too much. He was feeling it a little too much. That's my ball. That's Francisco Rosales all day long. Javi Guerra in the channel. Oh, we love a driven low hard ball. We do love a driven low hard ball, Indrik. Oh, Rico, great pass. Doig. Yes. All right, everybody's up there. Conda. 
McIntosh, yo, oh, please, please. Festy, Kaya left it. But why did he leave it? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Great time for a highlight. Endrick. Oh, no, Endrick. Squeeze him off the ball real quick here. All right, keep the highlight going. Keep the highlight going. Keep the highlight going. Yes. Keep the highlight going. Gotta look at the fullbacks here. We gotta look at the fullbacks. Thank you. Up to the winger and use that pace. You just came in and you were so fast. Thank you. We will take that. Everybody! Except for the keeper. Oh, McIntosh! Oh, he's won it! Oh, he has won it! It's McIntosh! And they have gone and gone all the way back against Galatasaray. Polly McIntosh. And it's seven wins from seven in the Champions League for Tottenham Hotspur. What a moment for Paul McIntosh. He had a second, he settled, and he hit a wondrous ball. Knifing through the crowd and winning the match for Tottenham. Oh. And the immaculate Champions League season continues. Seven wins in seven matches. Home field defended against Turkish giants Galatasaray. Smackintosh, hell yeah, dude. What a, oh, wow. Last chance of the match, McIntosh wins the corner, then gets it, bounces out to him. He settles, volleys it in. Tottenham stay top of the Champions League table by four points. It is a rapturous Champions League performance that it must be said is making us a lot of money. <laughs> We are, we are making a lot of cash from our tremendous Champions League displays. This is, this is the stuff right here. Clean as a Macintosh computer. Steve Jobs high-fiving you from the grave right now for that one. Oh, guess for the 10 minutes. Uh, we're just going to leave Simone Scotta alone with his thoughts here. Jash is going to be able to play in this next match. England McAvoy is not. Actually, if there was ever a match that England McAvoy was going to play, this would be it. We probably should play him in it to give, you know, all of our first team guys a full week off. That would be great for them. But I'll tell you what we are going to do because we are in the transfer window is we are going to save up. And that is where we are going to get to today. Europa League's going on. Roma leads Milan 1-0. Benfica leads Marseille 1-0. Liverpool and Atalanta. West Ham and Leverkusen all 0-0 across the board. Villa's up 1-0 against Lille in the, in the uh, Conference League. Well, Club Brugge stays up 1-0 against Pauk Thessaloniki. Six great matches. Hope you're able to watch them. We are going to go raid somebody, so stick around for that. Um, even if you are pulling up the matches, perhaps. We are going to go find somebody that we can uh, jump on and raid. So where might we go? Where might we go? Wow. Very, very happy that we uh, we won that match. That was ridiculous. Um yeah, you know what? There's a member of the Hammers that is uh, streaming. I recognize the name from chat. Let's give him a raid. I went from 3K to 150K bacon today. Great stream. Goodness, Matty. Oh, so soon. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, but yes, button in the stream today. I want to make sure that we can crush the deadline day tomorrow. Uh, and I will, of course, be back tomorrow. Thank you guys for all of the subs today. 
uh, for supporting the stream, for allowing me to do this. If you haven't checked out the Zealandism channel already, it's been a really fun passion project. I know we were just talking about it earlier, uh, but do check that out. Love you guys. Fist bump. I really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you guys soon. What we do need for this raid, though, is a uh, is a copy pasta. So allow me. Oh, well, where are we go? Are we going with the uh, sponsored copy pasta? That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, let's go grab that. That's our copy pasta. Grab it. Be sure to spam it when we do the raid. Scott Candage is one of us. He will understand what's going on, and we will absolutely make his day, his week, maybe his month, maybe his year. I don't know. But at least make him happy, uh, which is, of course, what we love to do with these raids. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one, everybody. Have a fun raid. Bye. Ceiling keeps hitting me in the face at the end of stream. I'm, it's a fist bump, man. <laughs> My wrist is tired. Am I getting carpal tunnel? I don't know. Bye, guys. Alrighty. Let's get that word of the day going, huh? Discomfort. D I S C O M F I T. Discomfort. Not discomfort. Discomfort. To discomfort someone is to make them confused or upset. Discomfort is a formal synonym of the also formal but slightly less so disconcert. Interesting. It's a formal synonym of the also formal but slightly less so disconcert. Jacob was discomfited by the new employee's standard. Er, Jacob was discomfited by the new employee's forward probing questions. Interesting. That's a really cool word. I'll see you guys at the end of another stream for another word of the day. I'm out of words, clearly.